This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. And good evening, everyone. Uh, we're coming to you live from Rose Field down here where the Midwest City Bombers are about to begin their playoff run. Tonight, they host the Bishop McGinnis Irish in what should be an extremely competitive game. Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Ray, joined by my partner, Tom Carpenter. And, Tom, whatever problems Midwest City had last, or last week against Elgin, you could just forget about it and put them aside. It's a new season right now. And... All that's in the past. That's one thing we talked about. This is a new season. This is game one. You got to win game one to get to game two. We can win game two to get to game three. It's that simple. We just keep going. And uh, I was at Bomber Brotherhood last night, and they were fired up. Trust me. We had over 40 alumni uh, come and speak to the guys, and I'm telling you, they're fired up. I tell you what, I hope there's another Bomber time next week. But Moose has to win first, and against Bishop McGinnis, a f traditional 5A powerhouse. In fact, uh, they have, and we'll talk more about this, uh, quite a Last year, uh, they are well coached. They got a first year coach. He's doing a great job. Uh, they're obviously in the playoffs. Uh, but I don't think they've played the caliber of teams that we've played. A couple of them they did, but uh, I think, I think You'll see an interview I had two days ago with Mill City head coach Terrell Hall and one of their key two-way players, actually kind of a three-way player, Josiah Johnson, uh, as he's on offense, defense, and special teams. That, Tom's keys to the game, and more. And you are watching Mill City Bomber football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Where sports is our middle name. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and ask yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's gonna be all neighborly about it? Ah. Insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Happy to be joined by Coach Hall. And uh, Coach, it was kind of a crazy game against Elgin because there was a game within a game trying to make sure you stayed within that two seed. What was it like bouncing that? Because I know at the end of the game, you punted when you may have gone for it in, in a different game and you didn't use your timeouts. Definitely a different strategy than perhaps you would if it was a playoff game. Well, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no uh, 10 points. All right, happy to be joined by Coach Hall. And uh, Coach, it was kind of a crazy game against Elgin because there was a game within a game trying to make sure you stayed within that two seed. What was it like bouncing that? Because I know at the end of the game, you punted when you may have gone for it in, in a different game and you didn't use your timeouts. Definitely a different strategy than perhaps you would if it was a playoff game. Well, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no uh, 10 point play. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's time to if it's a chance to win the game, then you use your timeouts. But it's going to take 10 points, and there wasn't that much time left. And like I said, um, you know, we didn't want to lose by more than 10. You know, and and that was in the back of your mind. We we went out to win the game, and if we don't hurt ourselves, we we're in the midst. I mean, we're on the one foot line. We fumble yeah. on our own 30. 
So, I mean, we only lose by 10. So there's points we left on the table. So, you know, we could have played a better game. But, yes, you want to make sure we didn't go on the road to Guthrie. Because if we had lost by 11 or more, then we yep. would have been on the road and we'd been headed to Guthrie this week. That's crazy that you're right on the margins. I mean, so many things come to my head. First of all, when I saw David on Monday, I told him thank you for making that field goal. Yes. Because that, that helped you stay within. And then Elgin missed a point after at the end of the first half. That would have changed things. You know, Noble missed a point after at the end of their game. El Reno missed a point after when they scored their last touchdown against you. So it's like um, you had some divine intervention to make sure you had that home game. Hey, yes. You know, it's always great to have some divine intervention. I feel like that's in part of our lives all the time. But, yes, uh, you know, the guys played hard. I mean, we played hard all year. Yeah. When you look at things that's going on, it, 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 we didn't win the district, and that's what we set out to do and move on further. But we also wanted to host a playoff game, and we're, setting, we're still in control of our own destiny. And if you look at our record, we're 6-4, and four, and three of those teams hadn't lost a game. The only team yeah. that's lost a game is in the playoffs. So it ain't like we lost to some nobodies. Everybody, is, everybody that we lost to is playing for something also. Yeah, I think you claim the top strength of schedule of the 5A teams. I think so. Okay, so let's look at this game. Elgin, the fewest points they scored heading into the game was 42. Yes. You gave up one offensive touchdown. How do you feel about what made your defense successful? Well, defense has been playing well. They, I mean, things have gotten better since El Reno, to, in my opinion. Um, I mean, things, uh, guys, we're tackling well. We're getting to the ball. We're doing all the things that we know we need to do to be successful because you don't know who the guy's going to be on Friday night that's, that's, that's making those plays. And so, I mean, they, they're really sound. We're rotating a lot of guys. I mean, if you look at the stat book, you know, we'll play six defensive linemen. We'll play five defense, uh, linebackers. your running game to be have more success and then your passing game on top of that well i mean we've got to take advantage of uh, of what's going on i mean there are opportunities that we missed i mean we got the ball down there like i said i mean we're on the one foot line we're first and go from the one yard line you know we expect to get in every time on that you know and on yep. that last snap we snapped over ahead you know and then going in it was first down we fumbled on that option play on the 31 yard line um, you know so we're in position Defense, like I said, got the big turnover and we, we moved it. So offensive-wise, I mean, we just got to stay on our blocks, increase some things, do some things that are to our advantage. You know, it's, the game of football is kind of like chess. I mean, depends on what they do, what we do. You know, yeah. if they're going to stack the box and we've got to be able to throw the ball and we've got to be able to catch the ball that's thrown to us. I mean, and we missed some big balls that were right on time that it's going to get, what, people out of the box to allow us to run the ball more. If not, we'll throw the ball, but you've got to catch it when we throw it. So there's, you know, opportunities missed, and we know that. So, you know, as any coach or any good team, we're going to go to work on it to improve those, those things happening. One last question before we get to the, uh, the player we brought, JoJo. Uh, I want to ask about one of your seniors, Jacob Brunson, because you played in bad positions he doesn't normally play. He started out at nose guard, I believe, and then he had to play a lot of center for you. How do you feel like he did, given that he's – used to playing just right tackle. Yes, I mean, he went from right tackle to playing a, a center because we thought that gave us a better option of what they were doing to us. Um, I thought he played really well. But Jacobs played well every, every week. You know, perfect, no. But well, yes. And sometimes better than others. But, you know, he's, he's a main force on the team. He's a team captain, elected by, the, by his teammates. So, you know, I, I was impressed for him to step up there. I mean, you got to realize that some of that work was put in by coaches preparing. I mean, it isn't like... He hadn't snapped the ball in, in practice sometime sooner during the season. He had because, you know, you never know what's up. So, yeah, I was proud of what he did, and, and, and we were able to get some more things to happen for us. So I, I'm that. And then, like here, JoJo, you know, he plays everything. Plays receiver, plays DB, you know, punt returner, kick returner. You know, so we ask a lot from him, and, you know, and, and for that he responds. And I'm glad yeah. he's here today to, to, to speak on his behalf and his teammates' behalf because, you know, guys like that make it roll. Let's talk to uh, the player we have from Midwest City here, Josiah Johnson. And, uh, Coach, you have a few really good two-way players, and this is one of your best right here. I would say so. He, he fits in the group with a lot of them that, you know, we ask him to do a lot of things, and he does. 
All right, JoJo, thanks for coming on. I remember when you were a freshman and you were getting playing time as one of the backup secondary players. How did that help you uh, develop confidence for these next two years? The guys that I had back then when I was a freshman was very, very motivated, very, very just leaders, and they helped me along the way, like Juwan Dancy and all those boys. I thought you made tremendous strides this year as a wide receiver. You've sort of become the number one option, which is also your number, of course. <laughs> but true. how do you feel like you've developed as a wide receiver this year? As a wide receiver, I've improved very, a lot. I went to um, the QBI with all the quarterbacks and just approved from Kenny week by week. I feel like one of your strengths is getting yards after the catch. You catch the ball in stride, you keep going, you're hard to bring down. Would you agree with that, or what would you say your strengths are? I keep talking about my legs. Yeah. Ain't nobody <laughs> with me in the season. And then as a safety, I mean, you're, you tackle guys that are twice your size, like they're half your size. Uh, what do you think you made as far as strides go defensively? Defensively, um, just being ready to work. Just being like, when I see somebody coming, I got to know I got to take them down. I know I got to take them down. That, are there really strong or free safeties on this team, or just just depends on what side you are? It depends on what side we are. We both we play both sides. Okay, do you like defending the, the run game better or going out to pass coverage? In this defense, it, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You're, you're up for all of it. Yes, sir. Yeah, he does a great job for us. I mean, he will fill the yeah. box. I mean, he's not big in stature, but, you know, if you look at film, he's there when he needs to be there, and he, he seals it up, and then next thing you know, he's covering the fade ball out on the edge. So, mm -hmm. you know, so he does a lot for the Bombers. One thing I want to ask about is you return punts, and, uh, Coach, I know that you, there were some issues early in the season with muffing punts and stuff like that. Does that impact how you approach returning punts now? And I know that Elgin has some good punt uh, or field position after their punting. Um, well, what is your approach to that? Well, we, we want to catch them. If yeah. we're able to catch them, we don't want to put ourselves in a bind to catch them. So we, yeah. we, we made some uh, changes on that and made some improvements to help ourselves out on that. I mean, they got the, they got the roll. I mean, he got three great rolls that weren't great punts. Yes. And, you know, and so... If we can get our offense the ball with less distance to go, that's always, if you look at the numbers, it's going to be to a plus. So, yeah, we, we made some strides to improve on it, and we're going to keep working on it to keep improving. Uh, JoJo, when you return punts, do you ever get, not nervous, but if it's an unconventional punt, do you get a little excited that, hey, this might be a punt that runs into another teammate or something like that? I do. But, you know, we made improvements to where I don't even have to do it anymore. Like, Mika King and, Ke yep. and Keon, they'll be able to do it. Those guys are going to be back there this week. All right, I'm looking for you to have a big return uh, against McGinnis. Speaking of McGinnis, very familiar 5A power, and they're going to move up to 6A2 next year. And they do have a tradition of winning road games in the playoffs. They've done that many times the last several years. Uh, what do you see about this Irish team that's going to be dangerous? I mean, they do it what they do well. I mean, the quarterback's very athletic. They've got two really good running backs with big on the line part, and they're going to execute. They're not going to, they're not going to beat themselves. So our job is to execute better and, you know, not let the catch you know that can beat you beat you. You know, we know we, the quarterback, we've got to shut him down. Running back, I mean, seven's also a target for him. Uh, on about half his throws or a third of his throws. I mean, because the ball in his hand goes, you know, can go, has a yard, chance to go yard. So, you know, our job is not to let them do what they want to do, and we do what we need to do. Um, you know, we're glad they're coming to us. I mean, we're at Roseville. We love Roseville. We love our home. Um, we yep. expect our fans to show up and be there. It's Veterans Day. I mean, we're Midwest City. If, if we're not a, indicative of what, mid, what uh, Veterans Day stands for, nobody is. So, uh, you know, we look forward to them coming. We got to do our job. I mean, it's lose or go home. Yeah. I mean, lose and go home, or win and, and keep playing. And uh, you know, we expect to be playing next week. Well, coach, I'm really happy we're playing on too. So I, I, I'm glad you made sure we had that secured. Yeah. Uh, Jojo, what do you think about Bishop McGinnis? Um, they're a very well sound team, but you know we're the Bombers, baby. That's it. Yep. All right. Question I'd like to ask. 
any first time guest, what is your second favorite sport? To be honest with you, I don't have a second favorite sport. I have a sport that I like, which is track. Though. Okay, rush track for the Bombers. So you're, it's like your favorite sport is playing defense, and your second favorite sport is playing offense or something like that. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, JoJo, thank you very much for coming on. You do a lot for this team, so I'm really glad you have you on. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the bracket. As you can see, we're going to watch closely the Bishop Kelly McAllister game. As the winner of this game takes on the winner of that game, if Bishop Kelly wins, then next week's game will be at Bishop Kelly. If McAllister wins, it's actually not so simple as McAllister being a four seed and this being a, a matchup versus uh, of two versus three here. But uh, we're not sure where that game will be 100%. But obviously, we will get, get that out there uh, regardless of where it's at. We will have that game for you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. All right, let's take a closer look at Bishop McGinnis, Middle City's opponent. And as you might be able to tell, a couple things stand out if you look at that closely. One of them is they play only nine games because District 2 in 5A has one non-participant in football, that being Guyman. It's an option for those teams to play four non-district games or three. Carl Albert plays four. Uh, Bishop and Guinness decided to only play three. And that means they have a week off during the season. And that week off was last week. So Bishop and Guinness has the advantage of coming off a bye week. It will be interesting to see how that factors into it. Their coach did tell me that they are pretty healthy. The other interesting thing about Bishop and Guinness is they have a history of winning road playoff games. And this is recent, too. Carl Albert has won the district in 5A2 since 2017, which means during that time, Bishop McGinnis has had to play road playoff games as they have routinely finished second or third. And uh, we even show one game in 2018 where they lost, but by one point. Otherwise, they go on the road in the playoffs, whether it's the first round or second round, and they usually win. In fact, I also looked this up, Tom. When you have the 5A playoffs... 5A District 2 and District 1 play against each other in the first round, which means District 2's number 3 seed goes on the road to play at the District 1's number 2 seed, which is what we have here. And the District uh, 2 number 3 seed has won, I believe, five in a row. So that district's obviously been more deep, and it is shown in this playoff matchup. We'll see if Midwest City can break that streak. As for the Bombers, you already know the main injury names we've, we've been showing to you every week. That includes Darian Rogers, Devin Sissons, Santana Landon. Uh, Landon and Sissons might be back later in the playoffs if Middle City can make a run, uh, but we're not going to show you all that. One new injury, though, Felix Fuentes, their starting Viper, in place of uh, Darian Rogers, Aiden Brown moved from the Viper position to linebacker in that incident or in that situation. But Felix Fuentes will be out. He told me himself he expects to be back next week if, of course, Midwest City wins. 
What's it going to take for Minnewa City to win? Well, let's go now to Tom Carpenter's Keys to the Game. Keys to the Game are brought to you by Eastside Church of Christ. The Eastside Church of Christ in Midwest City believes in loving Jesus by loving their neighbors. Thanksgiving Day, the Eastside Church of Christ serves a Thanksgiving lunch with all the fixings. It's free to the community. They invite you to eat the, at their table and share their company. Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 23rd, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Eastside Church of Christ at 916 South Boulevard in Midwest City. Well, for McGinnis, and I don't know if we got that corrected, but I put number 11, and I should have put number 5. Um, Cochran, he's a dual threat. Their coach really uh, bragged on him being a dual threat, both running and passing. And also number 7, uh, J.P. J. Spanier is uh, a pretty pretty tough guy to bring down. He can also catch the ball. Uh, they need to bottle up the Bomber running backs and take advantage of Bomber turnovers. For your Midwest City Bombers, they need to penetrate into the Irish backfield. Don't let them get those holes open, uh, and if they do, then we need to fill them up. Um, they, we need to get our running backs to the second level quicker. Uh, they have pretty good uh, defensive linemen that can get in, get uh, up to you pretty quick. And then, obviously, um, we need to cut down on our turnovers and, again, our penalties. Back to you, Jordan. All right, Tom, thank you very much. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will have the coin toss for you and then the starting lineups. It's do or die here between the Bombers and the Irish. One team will advance next week. Who will it be? We'll start to find out here in a few minutes. You are watching New City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Plumbing has been offering reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels, easy loading flat belt conveyor, unlimited membership, and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and asked yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's gonna be all neighborly about it? <laughs> insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Start a uh, car mechanic shop. Let's say we go to Scissor Tech. Can you go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think she was from One, Rose State. One, two, three. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and asked yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light, and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's going to be all neighborly about it? <laughs> insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. 
call Robin Will. All right, welcome back to Middle City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. we got the coin toss coming up. The coin toss is brought to you by Intertwined Hearts Ministry. They're a local nonprofit that provides biblical-based counseling, mentoring, and spiritual direction to couples and individuals. Scott and Leisha Young both graduated from Middle City and their kids have as well. They're located at 9107 East Reno Avenue. We thank them for their support. And as we have the captains about to come out into the field... I want to let you guys know that uh, there's a lot of 5A playoff action on the Oklahoma Sports Network, including Piedmont and Elgin. That's a game that I would be watching if I wasn't doing this game here, of course. <laughs> I'd be interested in that game. Uh, Dell City. Now, they're on the east side, of course, officially, and they are going to be taking on Pryor. And then Carl Albert hosting El Reno. And finally, um, Lon MacArthur going to Guthrie. But, Tom, I think we have the best game. Yes, sir, and uh, I think the Bombers fried it up. I was telling you, I was at the Bomber Brotherhood last night, and I think these guys are ready. And I don't think it's going to be as close as the paper said, but I guarantee you there's going to be some Bombers fired up to get some Irish blood on the field. All right, about to have the coin toss here. Bear with me one second. All right, so taking the time with the coin toss, but Memphis City has most of their seniors out, it would appear, and some others. Yes, First sir. level, <laughs> we got David Ariaga, Hakeem Oluwi, Jacob Middle Brunson, and Kenny so Colston. By the way, you might see number 91. That is the number now of Marquise Massengale. They made a number switch with him and Nathan Bryant. Uh, let's go. Black, talk to black. You got problems, talk to the guys in stripe. We'll work it out best we can. You guys have done a great job by getting this far. Good luck to both teams tonight. Got red. I have gold. I have. I have red. McGinnis, what's red? Okay, the call is red. Would you like to toss it and let it hit, please? Okay, it is red. You have won the toss. You would like to defer? Yes. You would like the football? You would like to kick the clock? Yes, sir. Okay. If you'll step toward the clock, you'll be right here, gentlemen. McGinnis has won and deferred. Bishop McGinnis won his calling cause. They have left to defer. Gentlemen, Midwest City will be receiving. Good luck, y'all. All right. Another great coin toss shot for you there. And now for the starting lineups, first for Midwest City's offense. Kenny Colston, the quarterback. Jalen Woody, we expect him starting at a running back, but it might be lost here the Violet. Either way, Midwest City's in good hands there. Nathan Bryan, when he's in, plays fullback. The top three receivers for Midwest City are Josiah Johnson, Lincoln King, and Keon Hudson. They all need to have a big game, especially if Bishop Guinness can do well against the run. To help Midwest City run the ball effectively, we got the offensive line led by the Jones twins, Demarion and DeMonte on the left side. Avon Curry at center, Humberto Jr. Ambrosio at right guard, and Jacob Brunson at right tackle. And then when Midwest City's on defense to start out, we expect Drell Chambry to be the starting nose guard with, Ambrosio, with Junior uh, getting a rest after his offensive series. Ja'Shawn Grisby will be one starting defensive lineman at the tackle, Nathan Bryant at defensive end. The linebackers, Ross Jones at strong, Kiwan Lander in the middle linebacker, Aiden Brown the weak side backer. 
in place of Felix Fuentes. Look for Jaheim Mahmoud to be the starting Viper. Quaylen Pennon back in the starting lineup at one cornerback. Keon Scott, the other quarterback, or cornerback, and Jalen Woody and Josiah Johnson are the safeties. And let's go ahead and hopefully this isn't the last time we mention them, but we're going to go ahead and show off the Midwest City coaches led by head coach Darrell Hall. Tyler K, the defensive coordinator, Randon Lowe, the offense coordinator, John Mitchell, the assistant head coach and recruiting coordinator, Philip Wall, Philip Wall, one of the defensive line coaches, Tim Thomas, freshman coach, Jay Vernon, the head freshman coach, Dominique barnes Karn, the defensive backs coach and the special teams coach, Butch Chauvinek, strength and conditioning coordinator, Robert Walker, one offensive line coach, Chauncey Dane, the other offensive line coach, Quinn McLeod, the linebackers coach, Jameel Owens from Muskogee. The wide receiver coach and David Mustin is the running backs coach. All right. First quarter of this game is brought to you by Vision Care Direct of Oklahoma, Oklahoma's premier vision plan. We remove the high out-of-pocket costs, get a complete set of glasses for only $30 with Vision Care Direct of Oklahoma. All right, Tom, I think it's real important. I think um, Nova City had to be a little disappointed with their running game last week. And now they get the ball first, start the uh, game. I think it's important to get that running game going. This first set of downs is going to make us or break us. I really think so. I, it's going to show uh, if we can come back from some of the mistakes we made last week. We stopped a pretty powerful offense, and they, we knew they were a tough defense. There was no doubt about that last week. But this week, I think we, we, uh, I think we can cut the mustard, as they say. Lincoln King, one of the returning back from Midwest City, will be a uh, play up. Back deep for Midwest City's Jaheem Mahmoud. The kicker for Bishop McGinnis is Will Kilgallen. That's a new Irish name. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot of kicking too. I think he punts and does does the whole nine yards. Two of the most prominent football names in high schools you'll see in the Oklahoma City Metro and the state of Oklahoma, Bishop McGinnis and Midwest City. And uh, I don't know if they've ever played before in football, but they're going to play now. That one I'd have to look up because I really can't remember us ever playing no. them. For the longest time, McGinnis was a 4A school, and then they moved up to 5A, and then because of some recent football success, they moved up again, or they will move up again to 6A2. All right, here's McGowan's kick. Onside. Onside. Bishop McGinnis thinks they have it. They do have it. And that's the first time Midwest City's given up an onside kick. I haven't seen. No, they, have, they don't have it. Bombers have it. McGinnis was celebrating, and that got that got the Midwest City crowd going. Tom, I've never seen anything like that. They were so sure they had it. That's why I said something, because it sure looked like they popped up with it. Sometimes when I see that, I also wonder where the ref's confused, but one ref is clearly pointing towards Midwest City's direction. He's standing with it on the 50-yard line. And the Midwest City offense is out right now with the ball at the 50. And the head ref confirms. I have to say, I did not get a good view of what happened there. No, I just saw the Irish guys jumping up and pointing. I thought, well, we must have lost it. Did it go 10 yards? Oh, yeah. Look where the ball is. Maybe that, that may have been part of it. They didn't throw a flag, though. Anyway, you can watch it on playback. You can play back right now. Rewind it if you want. That's the options you have watching the Oklahoma Sports Network. And here's Kenny Colston's first play from scrimmage, trying to lead the Bombers to their first playoff victory in three years. Handoff. It's the volley who will start a running back, and he gets a solid gain on first down. Gets about two on the play. Second and eight coming up. And there is a flag. Let's hope it's against them. That's going to be a personal foul. I think one of their players was in our backfield, still John. We have Jake Stoops, or Strope, sorry, as one of the tacklers. Looks like it is against Bishop McGinnis. They are quite confused, not knowing which direction to go. But they are, uh, it's a personal foul. They're deciding in favor of Midwest City so far, the refs, so I have no complaints <laughs> so far. All is good. <laughs> yes. And Midwest City will have a first and 10, just shy of the beginner's 30. We'll have it at the 31-yard line. Didn't see the penalty there, but uh, works out well for the Bombers. 
Throwing it short. They get to the side. Johnson with a little bit of space, but McKinnis, yep. McKinnis lost, closed down on a well, and he may have lost a bit. Well, uh, forward progress might give him something there. Might lose a foot, half a foot. Andrew Elder, their bandit linebacker, makes the tackle for McGinnis. Yep. Second in the long ten. Things McGinnis will, they are quick along the line. Yeah, they're not as big as some of the defensive lines we face, but they are getting across the ball. Getting a yep. Lavada, he's got some space there. Lavada gets past the first level. And he gets tackled at the 26, it looks like. Third down coming up. Jack Foster, the tackle for McGinnis. Bombers don't get another yard. It's, it's a makeable field goal for David Ariaga. Nathan Bryant leading the way at fullback. Which means Middle City shows run there. Doesn't mean they will run. But usually when Brian's in, they do look to run. Third down play. They will run it. The Violet again hits the hole but doesn't gain much. Gets past the 25 to the 24-yard line. All right, Tom, kick here? No. There, Ariaga made a kick around about this point in the second quarter last week, but your Coach Hall's agreeing with you as Nick House – Got the tackle. Jalen Woody will come in. No City is going to line up to go for it here. And we have it at fourth and four. They may try to get him to jump, call a timeout, yep. and then actually kick it. But it's going to be a it'd be a long kick from there. I know he can make a 34-yarder, but they'll hand it off on fourth down, and Woody going to be short. I think he's going to be short. He had a he had a running lane, but his blockers kind of slowed him down there. And the Bishop Bishop again his holds. That's what I was talking yeah. about. Getting our running backs to the second level quickly. There's too much delay on that. All right, Bombers defense needs to help out there as Bish as Midwest City. This is a problem against Elgin. They had. Some good scoring opportunities, and they couldn't capitalize. It's Cochran at quarterback for McGinnis. Hands off and a good first down gain for him. Good bomber gang tackling. And that's the dangerous player for Midwest City as Jalen Woody made the tackle. That's J.P. Spanier, or Sp Spanier, we'll call him. Bomber's looking good in them gold shoes. We did some painting last yep. night at Bomber Brotherhood. Oh, Cochran shifts two, and yeah, they, they that's motion. not legal. You can't shift two, right? Yeah, plus a lineman jump, too. So. Well, that was one of the players who <laughs> shifted. Yeah, he can't shift no matter what if he's one of the five. Look at Tyler Cade out there by the uh, line judge. So that makes it second and eight. And that just shoots him in the foot. Yeah, so far the penalties have been on Bishop McGinnis. Cochran going to get an audible from his coaches on second and eight. It's Spaniard again. Again, he's got a good hold to hit the first level. He'll be he's short. tackled short of the first down. Kiwan Landrum was there. And they'll make it third and short. Third I'd say two, third and two. McGinnis has looked good on their first two run plays. They're, they're getting a, a good surge on the offensive line. Bombers need to really toughen up here on this third down. Spanier now goes in motion. Still could be a quarterback run. Now come left side. They're going to throw it. Throw it short. First down, the pass is actually caught, not by Spaniard, but by number four, Jack Foster, and a third down conversion for McGinnis. It's a pretty good pattern he ran and a uh, good pass. Keon Scott with a tackle for Midwest City. And first and 10 for McGinnis now at the Midwest City 36. We need to get in there and get in his business right now. Spaniard left side. 
Spaniard moving nice. to the side before he gets brought down. Jones was chasing him, Ross Jones, for another tackle. I believe that's the Violet. He's now playing cornerback. He doesn't normally start, but he's in on this first series. Good tackle by Lossier La Violet, making it second and seven. He's shown his senior leadership. He, he can play anywhere you put him. Yeah, he can move, and that's what Moose needs. He needs several defensive players to be quick to the ball. Cochran again on that second clap. Handoff, and Spaniard's got a big hole this time. Down the left side. They bring him out of bounds at about the 20. Keon Scott made sure he didn't score there, but uh, big play for Bishop McGinnis. And uh, they're running the ball effectively right now. They actually go out of bounds at the 25-yard line. But a 35-yard run. Different running back in here. They hit the whole hard again. The blockers are just uh, really doing a good job as they get a first down on that run. Now we have a scrum. But it's going to be inside the 15-yard line. So not first and goal, but they're getting close. It will be a first and ten. Right. Exactly what you don't want to see happen if you're Midwest City. Now Cochran will be alone in the backfield. He's going to keep it right up the gut. He gets to about the five-yard line. I'll make it second down. McGinnis can get a first down without scoring. Ross Jones with a tackle. Second and four. Handoff as he looks to get to the edge and scoring for Bishop McGinnis. That's number two, J.R. Fletcher. And McGinnis takes a 6 nothing lead. That was just in-your-face football for the Irish, and even though they didn't recover the onside kick, and even though Midwest uh, City had the ball deep in McGinnis territory, Midwest City's defense, or sorry, McGinnis' defense hold, Midwest City's defense gives up a score on the first drive, and McGinnis with the early advantage. Kick is up, and it's good by Kilgallen, and the score is... Bishop McGinnis 7, Midwest City 0. You're watching Midwest City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels. Easy loading flat belt conveyor. Unlimited membership and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. Welcome back to Middle City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We forgot to mention last kickoff that our kickoffs are brought to you by Red Plains Plumbing. When you need a trusted plumber, feel confident choosing Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated since 2005. Call them at 405-769-1922. Well, last time McGinnis kicked off, they almost recovered an onside kick. They thought they recovered an onside kick. Ref said otherwise. Apparently, again, I don't think it went 10 yards. That might have been it. It was right at the 50-yard line, so that might have been. So the Bombers got to be ready. Nope, this time they will kick off. Looks like it will be close to a touchback. Instead, it will be fielded. 
and returned. I believe that's Mahmoud. He hits the first hole. Nice return. And it gets close to the 30-yard line. Bombers need something to good happen on offense here. All right, Tom. Scoring recap is brought to you by Valor Physical Therapy in Midwest City. Looking for top-notch physical therapy services? Look no further than Valor Physical Therapy, your partners in wellness. Call 648-0826 or visit our website at valorpt.com. Late sub for Midwest City to bring in DeJuan Davis as a wide out. Four wide for Midwest City. Trips to the right. Mahmoud, who had a good return, will stay in at running back. Mahmoud with a handoff. Got and spun in there, but got pretty good yards. He'll surge forward to about the 36. That's a really good first down run. Jalen Stewart, the tackle for McGinnis. We'll see that in our Triple Elite Instant Replay. Triple Elite. Find world-class design and hot new styles at Triple Elite. They got a big boy in there, but he's a sophomore, Nick Hill, number 77. He uh, got yep. in there, and uh, Mahmoud just ran past him. He takes up some space, that's for sure. So second and five for Memphis City, it's Colston. Good job to keep it as McGinnis had someone ready to tackle Mahmoud, and Colston will at least gain a little there. Gains about a yard. So third down coming up. So good quarterback read by Colston. However, you still would like to see a better gain than that. However, it will be third and three here. Good pocket. Colston will throw. Fires it short and is deflected. Incomplete. Uh, that guy was <laughs> covering him real good. Davis, the intended receiver. Good defensive play there for Bishop McGinnis by uh, I believe that's number 29. Shows uh, Dax. And I can't get a good look at his first name. Dax Corey, I think. Corley. Corley. So again, on third and three, and they had a fourth and four. They couldn't convert. They can't convert in a third and three here. That leads them to have to punt. So the Bombers need to get some things going on offense, but not yet. They need a good punt from Mariaga. And they do. It's going to bounce. It's a really good punt. Goat gets inside the 10. McGinnis thought about returning it. They will not. This is a great punt as it gets... Pins McGinnis back, but Tom, again, if Bimacy's defense can't improve, the field position will not matter as much. No. Great kick by Ariaga. So Midwest City's had the ball twice, and they have not gotten a first down yet other than a penalty. personal foul penalty on McGinnis. McGinnis... Their last drive drove up the field. It was about uh, almost 70 yards. It was more than 70 yards. One big run and a lot of good medium runs. We'll see if they try. To, if they can do it again here. Handoff. Yeah, had about three, maybe four. Oh. Hakeem Oluwi was there to drive the pile. As we're seeing a heavy dose of Spanier for Bishop McGinnis. Called second and eight, so one of the best defensive plays actually for the Bombers so far. Now, Cochran's got two in the backfield. Puts man in keeping motion. It, keeping it, keeping it. Keeps it, then he Option. pitches it out. We read it, good deal. Good read by the Bombers, several of them were there, including LaViolette. No gain. No gain. We'll see that on our Triple Elite instant replay. Again, Triple Elite, find world class, world class design and hot new styles. And it's third down in eight. McGinnis did convert a third down via a pass. In fact, the only time they've had a third down, they did. So you don't want to sleep on Cochran's throwing ability here. But he'll have Spanier back with him. 
Spaniard wants to shift sides. I think there's some confusion for McGinnis here, and they will call a timeout. You might say they were down to two seconds on the shot clock. So. All right, we'll take a quick break. You're watching New City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Welcome back to New Steve Bummer Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This Vision Care Direct first quarter. Chance for Middle City's defense to get them back in this game here. They got to stop against on a third and eight. Good. Put pressure on him. Put pressure on him. Good. Pressure with oh, the pass tackle. is caught. First missed down. Tackle. Johnson. Oh, he missed the tackle, but however, falling down, saving a big gain for being a massive gain as uh, Johnson will get credit for the tackle. But that's probably the second most dangerous player is Peter Belecki. And. Bombers again on their heels. They have not been able to stop McGinnis consistently here. First and ten for the Irish. Screen. Screen throw, and that's going to be first down gain. That was caught by Jack Foster. Keon Scott brought him out of bounds there. And another first down. Coach Cade is not happy. Well, but he's been. They've had much to be happy about. They got to put together three good plays. He's been known for that, but he's uh, he can do it. Keeper this time for Cochran. Jones hits him, but he can't keep Cochran from stay still going, and he gets a first down. Aiden Brown with a tackle for Midwest City, and. Coach Hall and Coach Kate are not happy with what they're seeing. They're going to call a timeout here to try to get this Bomber defense in a good position here, which hasn't happened yet. So we'll take another quick break. You're watching Moose City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Plains Plumbing has been offering reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Welcome back to New City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. McGinnis has driven the ball here about 50 yards. And they're getting close. They're already in New City territory. They're getting close to a red zone here. On a keeper, and again, making some men miss and getting a good first down run. It is the stud player for Bishop McGinnis, number seven, J.P. Spanier. He got popped pretty second hard. second and there. short. We'll see if that slows him down. He got popped pretty hard. Aiden Brown got him down. Second and four. Again, it's taking a lot of time. They're uh, controlling the clock right now, time of possession, and the scoreboard at the moment. Cochran again hands it off to Spanier. There we, go. There there we, we go. go. First time you see him met in the backfield. He's going to try to get every inch he can, but this will be a, a bit of a loss. The first time the Bombers have. As we see that in the Triple Eight Instant Replay, have gotten a tackle for a loss. Setting up a third down. Now this is probably four down territory for Bishop McGinnis, so Bombers have to step up twice here perhaps. And also they have to be very aware that McGinnis, even though they've thrown the last two third downs, might run in here knowing that they could go for it on fourth down. 
So in the backfield with Cochran. Handoff Spanier, and he will be short. Hakeem Alawu. Hakeem Alawu with a tackle. I'll get his name down by the time the season ends, I guarantee you. That's Hopefully a, it's not tonight. That was a great, yeah, exactly. That was a great penetration. That's what they've got to do. They've got too far to go. And, of course, McGinnis does or is going to go for it, as expected. Trying to get Bombers jump off sides, what they're going to try to do, because they've seen us do it before. Cochran's been, uh, the two times he's had to throw it, he might have to throw it here. It's kind of a long situation to run for it, but don't be surprised. Changes his backfield. He's going to run an option play. He's going to get it. Gets the first down. First guy yeah. missed him. The OC defense cannot get off the field here. Josiah Johnson with a tackle, but you don't want him to get too many tackles where he's positioned as a safety. You need your D-line and your linebackers to come through here. Yeah, they need to step up. They act like the McGinnis is wearing green and they can't see him or their camouflage. Yeah. They're going to let the first period run out. All right, a disaster of a quarter so far from – or. Not so far. It is a disaster for the first quarter for Midwest City. We'll see what they can do in the second quarter. You're watching Midwest City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. State College graduates. Welcome back to Mississippi Bummer Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Jordan Ray, Tom Carpenter here with you. This quarter brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, located 5500 Tinker Diagonal in Del City. It's football season in your neighborhood Buffalo Wild Wings. With over 64 TVs, beer burgers, you know Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings is the best choice and the best place to go watch the game. We went there earlier today, and we loved it. Good stuff. So a first down play inside the 30 is McGinnis. Cochran will fake it. He'll throw it. He has a man open, and touchdown. it is caught for a Bishop McGinnis touchdown. Peter Balecki with a big catch earlier in this drive. Gets another big catch for a touchdown. McGinnis is up 13-0. Just a really good throw from Cochran, who's been extremely efficient. And McGinnis with now a two-touchdown lead. Bombers defense about to give it more points than did last week against Elgin already. We've just started the second quarter. And the kick by Kogallon is good. And the score is now 14 0. All right, real quick, some uh, 5A scores to update you. Carl Albert just retook the lead against Del Reno, 14 7. So Del Reno played him close early on. Dell City leads Pryor uh, seven nothing. Elgin, they're hungry, man. They're up fourteen nothing against Piedmont, and also uh, we see that and I lost the score here for a second. But Bishop Kelly is up on McAllister fourteen nothing. The winner of this game will play the winner of that game, uh, McAllister against Bishop Kelly. Bishop Kelly, who won District Four, off to a good start, and it looks like the two bishops looking good. They're up fourteen nothing. And they may have a rematch unless Midwest City can make something happen here. All right, Tom, what do you think? Uh, yeah, we, it looks like we got our hands teamed out there. Uh, let's hope they can uh, thwart any onside kick. But I think he's going to kick away. He's got a pretty good leg. He does. Ho ho hopefully we get another pretty good return like we did last time, get it up to the 30. Let's hope we can outdo that this time. Here's a Red Plains plumbing kickoff. 
When you need to trust a plumber, feel confident using Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated since 2005. Call them at 405-769-1922. Kilgallen to kick. And this will be a touchback. Really good kick there. So New City will take over at their 20. All right, Tom, how about that scoring drive for McGinnis? It was 11 play, 89 yards, uh, capped off by a Cochran to Balicki, 29-yard uh, pass. Um, scoring recaps brought to you by Valor. Physical Therapy in Midwest City. Looking for top-notch physical therapy services? Look no further than Valor Physical Therapy, your partner in wellness. Located near Midwest City High School, call 405-648-0826 or visit our website at valorpt.com. Mahmoud in a running back with Colston. And they're using Nathan Bryant as fullback here. And Mahmoud surges past the D-line, gets another solid first down game to about the 27-yard line. So do that every time. That's six yards. That's nice. Yeah, just keep rotating in the running backs. And the Tom, the thing is, McGinnis gets the uh, kickoff to start the third quarter. Jalen Stewart to tackle. and Yeah, we're going to have to get on the board. This drive is extremely important for the Bombers. Yeah, Moose City had their chance on defense to get off the field, but on third and eight and a fourth and six, they couldn't stop the Irish. Colston to keep it. He should have a first, first down. down. That should be Moose City's first first down as he gets to the 31-yard line. Another tackle for Jalen Stewart. And they're going to stop play here. I don't know if someone's hurt. They don't see a flag. There's a flag. So we may have to uh, take back the first first down. We'll see. Sideline warning. Against McGinnis. So the penalties have not been a problem. They've gone against McGinnis. But does the play not count? No, no, the play, play counts. It's, counts. Just, it's, it's just, just a, a warning. They haven't changed the down on the far end. That's I'm getting confused. But it does count because that's, that's where he got tackled. So they need to adjust the downs here. The down yeah, markers. it's first down. They need to move the downs marker. They... Chain gang knew what to do. They did. I was. They're a little slow there, but they're good now. On that. To, on that one. All right. First and ten for Midwest City. And they may have drawn him off sides. Good job. That might, is that the uh, young sophomore you're talking about? I think. To, no, that's Thomas Welch. He's a senior. No, he's a sophomore. A lot of the guys are pretty young. Yeah, it's what makes this so frustrating. They're New City a team with a lot of juniors and seniors, mostly juniors, is getting totally outplayed now by a younger McGinnis team. Tallwater's in for uh, the Fighting Irish. He's a pretty good uh, ball player, too. I think I remember his name in basketball. I did a couple of McGinnis basketball games in the last two years. He's 6'5". Yeah, that's one reason I remember him and the name. It's just a heck of a name. Hand off and my move might break one here. He gets past the 50, They're not 30, 50. They're not 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Midwest City. We got a player down. You can see the triple lead instant replay. That had me choked up. There is a bomber player down. Is that Yvonne Curry? 68. Yep, that is Yvonne Curry. So, that'll be something to follow. Who, Tom, next time the Bombers have the ball is who comes out at center for them. But what a run by Mahmoud. His best run? I'd say for the year. I mean, he had two good ones against Noble. Boy, do they need that. And they're back in this thing. Ariaga's extra point. It's good. It's good. All right, your score now. Bishop McGinnis 14, Midwest City 7. You're watching Midwest City Bomber football on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Welcome back to Minnesota Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. David Ariaga's first kickoff coming up here. This is your Red Plains Plumbing kickoff. When you need a trusted plumber, feel confident choosing Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operates since 2005. Call them at 405 769 1922. Well, we have a clear view that uh, Von Curry is at the trainer's table right now with his helmet off. We hope he can come back. He's a big part of this team. He doesn't play defense, though, so he'll have some time to rest. Get him taped up, throw some magic dirt on it. Yes, they need to find some magic dirt. Ariaga's kick will be angled, not Fumbled. a touchback. It's briefly dropped. McGinnis will try to center it, and will actually get a solid gain out of that. As they will get to the 33, looks like, for uh, uh, Bishop McGinnis here. Tom? Scoring recaps brought to you by Fowler Th Physical Therapy. They're here to support your journey towards a healthier, more active you. Visit us today and experience the Valor difference. Located near Midwest City High School, call 405-648-0826 or visit our website at valorpt.com. Right. Four play, 80-yard drive, capped off by a Mahmoud 64-yard blast up the middle for touchdowns. 14-7 Bombers. I mean, sorry, 14-7 Irish, but uh, the Bombers are uh, on their way back. I can already tell. Can their defense step up here? Cochran, handoff, though he keeps it. It's a good fake, and he gets a solid gain out of it to about the 39-yard line. Quaylen Pennon with the tackle. And it's pick your poison for Midwest City as you got two, three, four, five, and seven all doing damage. That's J.R. Fletcher. He's had some big, good plays. Peter Belecki had the last touchdown. Jack Foster, number four, has had some big plays. And, of course, you got J.P. Spanner, the quarterback, number five. Or, sorry, number five is Damon Cochran, and J.P. Spanner is their main running back. And off here to Spanier. He's going to get a first day. He spins off a tackle. Thankfully, Nathan Bryan was there to clean that up. But it's another first down for Bishop McGinnis. Now at the McGinnis 45-yard line. Like, yeah, I might try to put our big boys back in the middle, see what happens to yeah. close those holes up. Well, McGinnis is just executing well, blocking tremendous. Oh, well, they dropped that, though, and it's going to be a tackle for loss. Ross Jones with a tackle. Spanier picked up the dropped snap, and Bishop McGinnis dodges a bullet there. But we have a second and long, so this is where the Bombers have to tighten up. If they force a fourth down from here, you'd think McGinnis would probably punt, unless it's like fourth and inches. Bombers could use some of that. McGinnis shooting themselves in the foot. They do on that <laughs> play. We'll see if it matters. Do it again. Do it again. Cochran puts a man in motion. And then we have a stoppage of play. I think a time ran out. Yeah, they call timeout yeah. to delay game. Coach Pierce not happy with his offense right there. Call a timeout for McGinnis. That's their second one this half. We'll go and keep it here. So Guthrie, by the way, ahead of Lot MacArthur, 21-7. The fact that they even gave up a touchdown to MacArthur is uh, kind of surprising because Guthrie's been so dominant on defense. But now they pulled ahead 27-7. Dell City now up on prior 13-0. Bishop Kelly looking like they will advance up 21-0 against McAllister. The game's still early, all these games are. It's still 14-7. Carl Albert leads El Reno. And Elgin still up 14-0 against Piedmont. 
All those games I mentioned are on the uh, Oklahoma Sports Network with the exception of McAllister and Bishop Kelly. We hope to have Bishop Kelly on next week, though, if they go on the win, but Midwest City has to win first. This, okay. is, this is the stand. Let's make yep. a stand. Draw that line, guys. Don't let them buy it. It is officially on the scoreboard, second and 11. Bombers really need to force a punt here if they can. Now two in the backfield with Cochran. It's a pass. And off. It's going to be a halfback option. Oh, and he it's dropped incomplete. it. That's good defense. Josiah Johnson with a break up there. Jojo. That's nice Peter play. Kalecki, the receiver, went to the backfield to make the throw here. Well, you got to take a stand one more time. McGinnis has gotten a third and long already. And Peter Bilecki is the guy you got to watch out for. Cochran to Bilecki connection has produced two big plays for McGinnis. Can they make another one happen here? Uh, Cochran and Spanier option run is also a tough one. Yeah, I don't know if they'll run that third and 11, but he who that, knows. Is that run pass option that he uses too. But. Oh, something! somebody moved. Had to be them. Moving back. Another flag. And it is on. Delay game. It's delay. We don't pay attention to the shot clock <laughs> too much, as Tom calls it. Well, the play, play clock just doesn't sound right. Yeah. So it's third and 16. you got to got to hold them here. This would be a good time for a turnover. One yeah. thing you don't want to do is give Cochran too much time in the pocket. Got LaViolet in as the near side cornerback. They do throw. He's hit as he throws. That's Going a pressure. For first down. He's wide open. Gone for a touchdown. They just throw it on third and 16 over the secondary. And that's one of the uh, numbers I have not mentioned for McGinnis. Uh, I believe that's Nathan Steiner. What a blow for Midwest City. Third and 16, and they throw over the top. So that makes the score 20 to 7. And Kilgallen with the extra point. You got it. Extra point is good. Your score now is Bishop McGinnis 21, No City 7. You're watching No City Bummer Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and ask yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light, and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's gonna be all neighborly about it? <laughs> insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. All right, welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This Buffalo Wild Wings second quarter and the kickoff coming up by Red Plains Plumbing. When you need a trusted plumber, feel confident choosing Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operates since 2005. Call them at 405-769-1922. All right, the Bombers had their chance and couldn't get a stop on third and 16 as the secondary just got beat deep. I guess they um, may have underestimated him against the speed there. Or Another something went wrong, and this will be a touchback for Bishop McGinnis. All right, Tom. The scoring recaps brought to you by Fowler Physical Therapy in Midwest City. Their therapists are experts in athletic injury management and sports enhancing programs designed to push performance to the next level. Fowler Physical Therapy is here to support you in your journey towards a healthier, more active you. Located near Midwest City High School, call 405 Six four eight zero eight two six, or visit our website at valorpt.com. And I get that it was a uh, five-play, sixty-seven-yard drive, capped off by that sixty-one-yard Cochran to 
Brooks. It's Debbie Steiner. Pass. Look at the pass now. Going deep is Colston. He's got a man, but it's overthrown. Lincoln King, the intended receiver, will be second and ten. That's all right. I think it was a great idea. We got to do something to change things up. Yeah, Vaughn Curry not in at center. So they bring their normal backup center, and that's Dominique Cochran, who played some earlier in the season. And of course, last week it was Jacob Brunson who played some center for him. Second and ten. Colson fakes the throw, fakes the handoff, going deep yep, again. Yep, yep. And oh, that one is hit him in, the, in hands. the hands of Lincoln King, but he couldn't hold on. Got to catch it. It's good coverage, but that was right in the bread basket. He should have caught that one. So they're deciding to go the air here, even though they had a great touchdown run their last play from scrimmage is Midwest City. Now they have to throw it. His mom died. Decide Johnson back in. So here's third and ten. Colston, again going for the first down. And again, it's incomplete. Sworn out. Can't have that. Again, Lincoln King, the intended receiver, the sophomore. Not a great series for him. And, and now uh, the Bombers are in trouble here. They have to punt. And McGinnis will have the ball again with a chance to go up three scores. Ariaga to kick. Gets a good punt off. Fair catch. Still good field position for McGinnis. Fair caught at the 42, 43 yard line. Going to stop them again. We can't let them get any further ahead than what they've got because they've got too good a field position right here. 43. Well. No question for McGinnis, their quarterback, Damon Cochran, only a junior. Of course, any player that's not a senior for Bishop McGinnis is not someone no see have to worry about next year because Bishop McGinnis is going up to 6A2. But Damon Cochran has been tremendous this game. Hand off there. Solid hole, solid first down run for Kiwan Landrum with the tackle. Four yard gain, it'll be second and six, fighting Irish. Came on Landrum on the tackle. So Landrum with the tackle, second and about six. Down seven fifty to go in the second quarter. Bishop McGinnis in complete control here. Hand off again. Irish up the middle. Just short the first down. And that handoff went to number two, J.R. Fletcher, He's backup not, running back. Not too short. So we got third and probably a long one here. Bishop McGinnis has been really good on third down. And the one time they didn't get third down conversion, they went for it on fourth down and got it. On the keeper, a first down run for Cochran before Aiden Brown brings it down to the 41-yard line. Flag on the field. Flag on the field. We have a flag on the field. Well, that's one way to get <laughs> stop, maybe a stop. Stop their momentum anyway. Yeah, they're walking back. They know what they did. All the penalties on Bishop McGinnis, it hasn't mattered yet, but maybe this one will hurt their drive. Yeah, it's holding. Give a chance to get the ball back. But now the secondary, Tom, they can't. Let Bishop McGinnis throw over the top there. Uh, they, they've had him wide open by just letting him throw it up in the air and the guys running under. We've got to get somebody back there. Our guys are fast enough to cover that. Third and 12. I need to send somebody. 
Palmer's got four on the line. Let's see if maybe Hakeem can get there. Send Landerman. Send him to yep. Cochran puts the man in motion. Back to pass. Fires it. And that one's incomplete. And it looks like the Bombers have gotten their stop. I, mean, I think with that, Tom, hopefully we'll see him go back to the run game. Lincoln <laughs> King coming back as one of the deep returners for Midwest City. Lala. And Lala's one too. I'm surprised we usually see Josiah Johnson in that situation. We got two deep guys back. We'll see if they can get a return here. Kogallon, who also punts oh. for him. He waved a fair catch. It's muffed, and then he, he waved, waved a fair, a fair catch, catch, even though he didn't catch it. I think that's a penalty, I thought. <laughs> the Violet, well, I mean, he's not used to going back there and fielding punts, is the thing. So where he made contact with the ball is where Midwest City will take over. Might be a flag. They're pushing it back a bit. We got the 15-yard line. We got 6:29 to go. Bombers defense finally got to stop. Can the Bombers offense get driving again? We're seeing a lot of Jaheim Mahmood. He's been their best running back tonight, no question. Even if you take out his, his long touchdown run, he's in the backfield right now. He gets the handoff. There he goes. There he goes. And breaks free again. Mahmoud's about the 38-yard line. You see that on our Triple Elite instant replay. Triple Elite fun, world-class design and hot new styles at Triple Elite. Got a 22-yard run. We need some more of those, that's for sure. Seems like he's the guy that the Irish don't really want to tackle. Colston now going to have a play change. Gets his cues from Randon Lowe, the Middle City Offensive Coordinator. First and 10, Colston. Hand off a mood running sideways. Can he get to the edge? He does, and he'll actually get a solid gain here. Get close enough to the first down. Gets to about the 45-yard line, so he'll be second and short. That's nice blocking on that one, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of east and west running at first for Mahmoud. But he eventually got going north. I'll see Hakeem Oluwi coming in as one of their tight ends. And I guess there's a flag on the play. I didn't see I it. I didn't see it. I didn't see him signal anything. That would be the first on Midwest City. So they can't afford to have penalties. McGinnis can. Must be a holding. Yeah. So now Middle City goes back to the 27-yard line, and they got to get to about the 47, so first and 20. 47 of Midwest City. Here's Colson on first and 20. He'll keep it this time. It's a hole. Nice hole. And Colston with a good run. He's still up his And he lost, oh, he lost the ball. It just got taken away from him. Unbelievable. And that's the second. There's a flag on the field. I don't think this is going to. It's going to be a dead ball foul against yeah. Irish, I think, for excessive celebrating or something. I don't know. Colston lost it in a fumble uh, last week. Has not been a big part of the Middle City running game until two or three weeks ago, but, you know, just got to secure the ball better than that, and that's a huge turnover. It's on Midwest City. Looks like we got offsetting penalties, but it'll, I think it was after the play, so it will be McGinnis Ball. Yeah, they're stepping up. Not. 
So, there's a sideline infraction against McGinnis. They motioned something against Midwest City, but I guess it's just went against McGinnis. Now it's the 49 yard line of Midwest City's where McGinnis will take over. Jet sweep. And getting to the 44 yard line, that's Spaniard. Aiden Brown with another tackle. He's had a solid game for Middle City on defense. It's been close to five minutes to go here. First half that's been dominated by Bishop McGinnis so far. Five minutes left in the first half. On second down, they hand it off again. Ross Jones with a tackle to stop him short of the first down. Yeah, they're going to go for it. I don't have any doubt in my mind. Well, it's third down. I know, but, but I mean, this would be four down down territory. And Spanier with the handoff. Done a little bit better job against him. He was getting some big gains early on, but see the Bombers' defense can get a stop here. They've, they've been forcing third downs. They finally got a stop. The last McGinnis offensive possession. It's going to be a keeper for Cochran. He's got a big gain here. One, big hole up the middle. We're finally being tackled by uh, Iden Johnson Tolleson. Not till after he gets a first down inside the Midwest City 30. They throw it short here, going with quick tempo. And they get to about the 20, that's Spanier again. They're giving him too many yards on that, the too much cushion. They, yep. uh, they've got to fill up and uh, make sure it'll be a good place for an interception. Be second and four, Fighting Irish. So second and four. Under four minutes, let's see if we can at least keep him out of the end zone. Cochran looking for a hole on his right. That closed up in a hurry. He doesn't get the first down. He gets inside the 20. So we have another third and short coming up. And Damon Cochran has been effective with his legs as well as with his arm. He's got two long touchdown throws. They got quite a few threats in that backfield. That's Part of the bomber's problem there. Yeah. Just need to be solid against all of them. Cochran on the handoff, and that should be a first down for Fletcher. So right at the middle goes JP. Uh, sorry, JR Fletcher. They got a lot of initials there. There's your red zone. Yep. It's not uh, not our red zone, so <laughs> we're not going to call it. Can't say anything yet. Again, McGinnis gets the ball to start the second half. That's the other thing that weighs on you here as they're taking time off the clock. Handoff, that's Balicki, the receiver, but he gets a handoff, gets a short game. Good job by the Bombers there. Maybe a yard. That's a good stop. So second and nine coming up. And more clock running down. I'm going to throw it short there. Good tackle. Landrum with a tackle on the catch. That's Peter Belecki. Forces a third down. 
Third and seven. Now, a field goal here would be good for McGinnis, so we'll see if they would go that route if Palmer's defense can get a hold here. Now their kicker was yeah. hitting him from uh, at least 35 yards out. And McGinnis will take the time. Clock's now under a minute 40 to go. They're going to change the play here. They got trips to the right. And they're going to call their last time out of the first half. And their coach is not happy about that one either. <laughs> I wish that confusion yep. would pay off for us. Yeah, I'll have a timeout to get this third down play in, and that helped them uh, a couple times this game. All right, we'll take a quick break. You're watching Moose City Bummer Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and asked yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light, and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's going to be all neighborly about it? Ah. Insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football and the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coming out of timeout here is Cochran. And several tosses can it lead to a first down as they touchdown. find the running room. And flipping in for a touchdown is Belecki. And the Irish score again on third down. They convert on third down again. Now, what's the head ref motioning there? Looks like the touchdown is good, so it should be 27-7. So coming in to kick is Kilgallen. Extra point is good. Score is 28-7. McGinnis leads Middle City. We'll take another break. You're watching Middle City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels. Easy loading flat belt conveyor. Unlimited membership and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. All right, welcome back to New City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Here's another uh, Red Plains Plumbing kickoff. When you need a trusted plumber, feel confident choosing Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operates since 2005. Call them at 405-769-1922. Here's another Will Kilgallen kickoff. He has five right now. He's gotten the last two uh, have been touchbacks. Bombers have all their timeouts. So they took one? Yeah, they took one. So okay. we got two left. Oh, that's right, when their defense was, one of their drives where their defense was really struggling. Of course, that describes four of their drives, really. All right, Tom. Scoring recaps brought to you by Valor Physical Therapy in Midwest City. It's an eight-play, 49-yard drive. Kept off with a razzle-dazzle play. Ended up with uh, Balicki getting it in for about 13 yards. Extra points good, 28-7 with a minute 19 on the clock. All right, let's see what the Bombers can do with a minute 19. They have the ball because of the touchback at their 20-yard line. Low snap, Colson picks it up, has time, fires over the middle of the pass, intercepted. intercepted. Pass was overthrown. I believe there were two 15s involved. The intended receiver 
Mississippi City was Darwan Davis. And then getting the pick for Bishop McGinnis is Andrew Elder. And now they have a chance to score again. And really pour it on here. That did not help. Well, it is uh, pouring right now for Middle City. And the tough thing is, Tommy, and this is not exactly like what happened last year because they scored points last year. But right, just a, you got a 5A2 coming into our house and just completely outplaying them. As they run the ball here, it'll be close to a first down. In fact, it will be a first down. Another good run for... Bishop McGinnis is number seven, J.P. Spanier. First and goal. Right. And they got a first and goal here. Minimal gain there. Ross Jones, on the for the Ross Jones gets the tackle. Spanier, one yard gain. 45 seconds left in the half. To throw it in zone. Touchdown. And it is caught for a touchdown. And now it's an onslaught. That's Steiner with another big catch. He had a touchdown earlier in this game. And just went right over a Midwest City defensive back to get it. Just climbed the ladder on that one. Kilgallen to kick. And the extra point is good. 35 seconds to go. Midwest City now trails 35-7. Coming up at halftime, the Bomber Band will have a Veterans Day tribute. And Tom, just a lot of factors here going against Midwest City. One of them being, of course, McGinnis had a week off. But that doesn't explain all of it. Yeah, because sometimes that can play against you. Yeah. I think that the, the team, the thing that stinks is, you know, against 5A1 teams, Midwest City's defense has generally risen to the occasion with rare exceptions. But when they play a good 5A2 team, they just can't. They can't be successful on defense. And then their offense has had turnover issues in the second quarter. So that with a lagging defense, turnovers on offense have created this huge Bishop McGinnis lead. And again, they'll have the ball start the third quarter. All right, to kick off again is Kilgallen. And another good kickoff with a touchback. All right, Tom. Scoring recaps brought to you by Fowler Physical Therapy in Midwest City. Looking for top-notch physical therapy services? Look no further than Fowler Physical Therapy, your partner in wellness. They offer traditional rehabilitation, preventing screening, pre-op, pre-ant healing, get you fit for life. Call. 405-648-0826 or visit our website at ValorPT.com. Hand off to Mahmood. Mahmood's had a good game. He gets uh, about a first, first down. down. Clock will stop temporarily with 27 seconds. Get on the ball. Come on, guys. Now the clock is running. We're down to 23 seconds. They're going to hand it off again. It's Mahmoud again. Well, he's been tremendous. And now Coach Hall will call a timeout with that run there. He didn't get a first down, but gets close to the 40. Well, 20-some seconds to go, a little bit less than that. You got one timeout, and you're just going to have to trust Colson, I think, to make a play for you, even though 
It's been a bad second quarter for him with the interception and the fumble. Without doubt, the most disappointing first half of the played, even though they've struggled early in the season against Carl Albert and Dell City when they're non-district, I mean non-football district games. You know, it's just a matter of them trying to fix things in that situation. Plus, those teams have such great athletes across the board. But after giving up only 13 points to Elgin last week here, only one offensive drive. It's just been a big letdown here for Middle City. They're going to run it again. Mamu gets a first down. He gets past midfield to about the 48-yard line of Bishop McGinnis. Seven seconds left on the clock. Try to spike it, call a timeout. I don't know why you wouldn't go and call a timeout. And they will. They do call a timeout before any other time comes off the clock. Timeout, bomber. So we'll see what they can do. They got 48 yards to go in seven seconds. Maybe they can throw something short down the sideline as well in under seven seconds and have one more play. We are just not executing. We got to do that. Now, penalties weren't a problem for Middle City. They became a problem, and then turnovers became a problem in this quarter. And that went from a game that could have potentially been competitive to a game that's currently a in the blowout status. <laughs> So the Bombers are trying to go for a big play here. They need something. Give them a, give them a good feeling to go into the halftime with. And they're going to run it. They run it. Well, they should get another first down, but the clock Clock's will stop. expired. So we go to halftime. Your score, Bishop against 35, Midwest City 7. Take a quick break, come back with... Halftime festivities on the field. You are watching New City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Okay, cool. when it's going towards you. 
Because I had did that when he had did that running thing. Yeah. And I had caught it. And I had caught the, uh, like the other ass. Yeah, that's good. Like, I can touch that. That's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let's hear it for the Bomber High School Marching Band. How about a round of applause for our Midwest City High School ROTC Flag Bearers. Great job. Question. Is anybody else doing a halftime show? No, I don't think so. Oh. Can I go to the bathroom?
want to start? I want to start a uh, car mechanic shop. Let's say we go to Sizzle Kid. Ready to go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. But it's a great space. Yeah. It's so close to downtown. You want to go grab something to eat? Let's do it. What time are you working on? Last Wednesday or last Friday? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think she was from one, Rose State. One, two, three. <laughs> Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels, easy loading flat belt conveyor, unlimited membership, and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. Red Plains Plumbing has been offering reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Jordan Ray here, happy to be with you. And, of course, this has been a horrible first half for Midwest City. They trailed 35-7 to Bishop McGinnis. And unless they can make a dramatic turnaround, it looks like their season will end tonight. And perhaps we'll see Bishop McGinnis take on Bishop Kelly in a rematch of a game earlier this year. Uh, let's go ahead and show you the scoreboard. So a lot of these games on the Oklahoma Sports Network, again, um, Dell City with a firm command over Pryor. Their defense playing great. 27-0 is the score we have. Uh, Elgin got off to an early start against Piedmont, up 14-0, and then that game's been at a standstill. So that's an advantage again for Elgin as they look to win maybe another low-scoring game. We'll see if um, Piedmont can get going. That's actually two top-10 teams in the rankings for 5A by Scordle, even though it's a one-versus-four matchup. Uh, the close game could be Kawita and Collinsville as Kawita is only up 13-10 in the half. I believe whoever wins that game will probably play Carl Albert. Carl Albert also up uh, big right now against El Reno 35-7. So it will be Carl Albert more than likely unless, again, El Reno makes a dramatic comeback. But that game on the Oklahoma Sports Network 
And if Bishop McGinnis holds on, they'll play the winner. Bishop McGinnis McAllister again right now at Bishop McGinnis. It's Bishop, I'm sorry, at Bishop Kelly. Bishop Kelly, I'm sorry, against McAllister. Bishop Kelly's up 28-7. And also a potential close game as Claremore has, uh, after they, they were trailing by four late in the third quarter, they have scored uh, a couple of touchdowns to end the, uh, or sorry, the second quarter, a couple of touchdowns to end the first half, and they're up 31-21 over uh, Sepulpa. And... Um, the winner of that game would play Elgin if Elgin can hang on to their lead. And then Guthrie, up big on MacArthur, 35-14. And if Guthrie holds on and Del City holds on, those two teams will play each other next week at Del City. That would be a, a tremendous game potential. As you can see, they're ranked 2-3 and three in 5A, and they deserve those rankings. Those are two really good 5A teams. So one of those teams, though, will not make the Final Four. And also the Guthrie game is on the Oklahoma Sports Network. As far as this game goes, just uh, big big plays by Bishop McGinnis. Their quarterback, Damon Cochran, has led the charge. He's made some big plays. Also, we've seen big runs from J.P. Spanier, J.R. Fletcher, Nathan Steiner and Peter Belecki with some big catches. Jack Foster's also had some good plays. So that's two, three, four, five, six, and seven are those numbers players for Bishop McGinnis. Their defense forced some turnovers in the second quarter. As uh, Midwa City got the ball uh, or got within 14 7. As big as those turnovers were, the back breaking play had to be when the score was 14 7 and around midfield, a little bit. Uh, Past midfield, McGinnis had the ball in their own territory, close to midfield. And Damon Cochran threw on third and 16 over the top of the Middle City defense. When you know they had to throw the ball, you know that they had to go fairly deep to get the first down, and he found Nathan Steiner for a 60-plus or close to it yard touchdown pass. That made it 21-7, and then Middle City would turn the ball over two more times. That would lead to two more Bishop McGinnis touchdowns, and Bishop McGinnis will have the ball to start the third quarter. So we're about a minute 14 out. And I wonder if we're at the point for Middle City if they just talk about playing with pride here. But they have to feel like, you know, McGinnis, if they can outplay you this badly in one half, maybe you can outplay them as badly in another half. So, look forward to having the second half for you. Here's to see if we have a touchback. Also, we want to thank our halftime sponsor, La Herencia. For the best Mexican food in the Middell area, whether it's dine and carry out using Grubhub or catering, just eat the delicious food. La Herencia located at 6811 next to Jimmy's Egg, um, 6811 Southeast 15th Street. The phone number to call is 405-931-3154. And we're about to have another Red Plains Plumbing kickoff. Red Plains Plumbing, when you need a trusted plumber, feel confident using Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated since 2005. Call them at 405 769 1922. This third quarter will be brought to you by Rose State. Want to learn new skills in a high paying job? Rose State College offers majors in science, technology, and engineering that will make you competitive in our high tech economy. Apply today at rose.edu. All right, Tom Carpenter should be joining us here soon. And we're ready for the start of the second half. David Erica on the field with the Bombers, ready to kick off. Signing on this, ready to receive. So Ariaga has one kickoff. It was not a touchback, and McGinnis had a uh, solid return here. So we'll see if he gets one here. And now Tom Carpenter has rejoined me.
This kickoff Hang on your much better, and it will be a touchback. Sorry, had some social ob obligations. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them came in here. Early. Yeah, and I don't. I didn't. That was out of nowhere, and I didn't. Yep. I haven't seen him in years. Well, I'm glad you two got reconnected. <laughs> now, <laughs> I think Tom. One of the things is uh, Memphis City's third down defense that has that has we would do another. But it looks like Brunson's out there now. That's a good start. Well, that means they're they're going to throw the kitchen sink at him. We're going to have to. This they is got, it. <laughs> they got two big defensive tackles right now. Usually you just see one from Midwest City. And they're going to throw on first down. And they, they, the pack, The pocket collapsed, and the Midwest City gets their first sack. I think in a couple of games there. So what we needed. Brunson put them back in the hole, and so did yeah. uh, Ambrosio. DeMonte Jones, I think, with a tackle or the sack, as you see a triple eight instant replay. So the Bombers are like, Heck with it. We're going to bring in our offensive line here. Brunson and Jones. Also, uh, Junior. So that's three uh, starting offensive linemen. You don't normally see that on defense. So second and long. Handoff. Another one. There's our and defense. there was no Show hole there. As the Again, you got to collapse there and the Violet, one of the tacklers there. Ross Jones got the tackle for a loss. It's third down. Yeah, big guys are standing them up. Yeah. Well, they're still excited. I like that. I like that not too down right now. You know, somebody has to get them fired up. Somebody yeah. probably explain to them, this is it, guys. It's either wrestling or basketball season, or you're yeah. going to hit the weight room because this, uh, this is it. Third and 14, a man in motion for McGinnis. They will go for the first down in the air. Guys open. Fire deep. And another wide open guy, third and long, and another conversion. All that momentum he had on defense. And once again, they could not keep Nathan Steiner from getting past him. So that gets the Bishop against the Middle City 31. Cochran again looking to throw, again throwing deep. And that pass is deflected. That's LaViolet with a deflection. Tom, it's just not, it's just hard to believe that the secondary from Middle City would get beat like that twice on third and longer than 14. Well, they've, it's been more than that. But they've been open. Yep. We get the, keep getting that penetration into the backfield, though. That's going to make the change up their way of thinking. Second and ten, handoff, and again, it gets hit in the backfield, and then Brunson will get a tackle, I believe, there. Yes, sir. That's See that on triple lead instant replay, J.P. Spanier brought down. Another third and long. And yeah, we had the whole hee-haw gang back there, and that's what we need. Well, I mentioned before, Peter Belecki was the big-time receiver for McGinnis, but now you got to think about Steiner. <laughs> As you can hear a fan and watch the pass. And that's the other interesting thing. And it's obviously you would do it here on third and long, but McGinnis has looked to pass quite a bit this drive, even though they're up by 28. And of course, they're going to look to pass there. Going to go for the first down. That's behind him, way behind him. Much better coverage there, forcing a fourth down. I think that may have been Jaheim Mood on the coverage. Yeah, they're going to have to go for it. Uh, no, I think it's Aiden Brown, who can really play all over the field. Thing is, it's worth mentioning Felix Fuentes, who had been starting on defense the last several weeks, is out. And yeah, this is well, no, they may be making a change to the punt team. Field goal. No. A Fifty-two yeah. yard field goal try. I'm a little surprised at this. Kilgallen uh, will kick. Watch for a fake. That's, but that guy could kick. I'm telling you, he kicked him from. Yeah, he has looked good 45 kicking. Forty-five out in practice. This direction. Nope. Kick will be well short, though. Lands in the back of the end zone. So that I, I'm surprised by that decision. I mean, it's 28 points. I don't want to start acting like it's going to be a game. Yeah, we have to see Middle City's offense step up first. But 
I'm surprised Beginners would do that, kick a field goal, because, you know, that's the play that seems to give Midwest City the best chance with as far as field position. Now, because of the rules, maybe I should change my tone there. Yeah. They, okay, they, I didn't realize they go back to the 20. It's a Okay, well, now that attempt, attempt at field goal makes a lot more sense. But that's not something you see in the uh, college or pro game. No. All right, can Colston get going here? As the defense had a, overall a good series other than one busted play. And Mahmoud runs into a wall there. DeMonta Jones really put a good block on a guy, but uh, Mahmoud kind of ran to the wrong side of that block. But he just still managed to get two yards. Well, it may have been Matkins, the nose guard, I believe, for McGinnis with a tackle. So second down and eight. Colston has a man in motion. Throws it short and just too Missed wide. It. Missed it. Missed for Josiah it. Johnson. And now we got third down. Don't need to get in this situation. Well, they need Colson's need to complete something downfield, and that has to happen for Midwest City to have any life on offense. So we're probably going to try for it again because it's third and it's third and eight. So Colson will throw under pressure, and his pass wide of the mark. Fourth down for the Bombers. That'll be fourth down. Davis, the intended receiver for Midwest City. So Bombers defense showed some signs of life. Offense yet to do that. And Ariaga will come in to punt here. So he bangs one, gets it out of bounds, but they can't get any kind of return on it. Either way, they're going to get some pretty good field position. Good kick. Another good punt for Ariaga. He's had a good game he punting. Probably, that is muffed. muffed. I think Bombers got it. Bombers. Well, I thought McGinnis had it on initially, but we'll see what they call. Nope, it's McGinnis nope. ball. Yeah, one of the few bright spots for Middle City has been David Ariaga's punting. That has not been a problem. Jim Mahmoud also has played real well. So here's Bishop McGinnis' second possession of the third quarter. Also tough to see for Middle City, Yvonne Curry. Once again, sitting at the uh, trainer's table. He has his helmet, but doesn't look like he'll be able to come back in, which is too bad. He's a senior and a really good player and good kid. To throw now, and it should be another sack or close hey, to it. I don't know if he lost yardage right there. Right on the line. Good job by the Midwest City secondary, taking away any option. And Kiwan Landrum gets the tackle. We see that on our Triple Elite instant replay. Triple Elite, find world-class design and hot new styles at Triple Elite. Love to see the Jones boys out there. All three of the brothers have, uh, have right. suited up. 65 is Demarion, 70 is DeMonta, and 76 is the freshman uh, Dadirian. Uh, he, he looks like he could be a good player. I told, I told him I'd mention their names because it's neat when brothers can play. Yeah, and they'll be back next year. Keeping it there and uh, close to a first down. He may have the first down is Cochran. Can't miss those tackles. Keon Hudson with a tackle. It is a first down for McGinnis. The line's getting pushed around pretty good. They need to get in there and penetrate again. Quick throw again. There. Bishop McGinnis has not been shy to throw the ball here with a 28-point lead. And that pass was caught by Steiner. 
Cochran was on the money yep. with that pass. There wasn't a yep. big big uh, lane to throw it in, but he found that hole and put it in there. Making it second and one. Cochran has been tremendous this game. He's played really well. Look for him to have a dynamite year next year. The fact that River Warren left McGinnis a year early will help them for next year as Cochran's getting a lot of good experience. And missed tackle, making, a, missed miss, tackle, making missed a man tackle. miss and getting Come a on, first guys. down there. That's Spanier. So it's kind of like a trickle-down thing, Tom. The defense was fired up at the first drive, but with the offense not doing anything, they lost some steam. Some penetration. It's a pass, and then they throw it short. He's open, caught in the 39-yard. There's a flag thrown. I don't know what that know, was that, for. Could that be on the violet for just... I don't know. On to, um, I don't know. I didn't see. It didn't look too bad. Holding on to Balicki with a catch. Peter Balicki had a couple touchdowns earlier this game. I don't know if they call a horse collar on that. That's that's the only thing I can think of because it yeah. looks like it was just a clean tackle to me. Let's see, yeah, he's going to call it. Oh, maybe he got a piece of face mask. I'm going to call face mask. So I really thought he got him by the shoulder pad. <laughs> that moves the ball to the 34. And fresh set of tens for him against. I don't think that was a personal foul face mask. So Fake the throw. They throw it to the right. They fake the handoff nice and throw it to the right. That's Jack Foster with a catch. Gains about three on the play. So second and seven. Is that Woody the on the tackle? Thirty-one yard line. I think yeah, Woody I missed got, who that was, but I think it was Woody. He made a good penetration, yeah. got in there. Still got him too many yards. Well, we haven't seen as much of him at running back, but he still can play safety, and they need him. He can play running back too. Just Jaheim Mahmood's been the hot running back this game. The pass is Cochran. And overthrows his intended target. I see a flag on the play there. Yep. Yeah, I think everybody saw holding. I heard somebody in the stands yell it. Holding on offense? Yes, on the offense. Right. Bombers elect to take the penalty. You know, sometimes in that situation you might decline it. But uh well, they they'll, they'll replay second down, and they'll just move Bishop against his back. Any way we can back him up, we need to yep. do it. Yeah, you, don't, you don't even want to give up a field goal here. You want the ball back without giving up any points. So the ball is now at the 41-yard line. McGinnis has to get to the Midwest City 24, so about second and 17. Cochran hands it off. And a big hole for McGinnis. And missed tackles, missed tackles, missed tackles. And they'll get close to a first down again. That is going to. That's the backup running back, J.R. Fletcher. And to give that up on a second 17, again, that's just. Um, Bombers now playing with the quality of defense we've seen for the last several games. And that is a first down for McGinnis. They're going to throw it there. Oh, it's picked off. That's Jalen Woody with the interception in deep in Midwest City territory, but they get the stop there. Jalen Woody pretty excited. You see that on the Triple Elite instant replay. Tom, I'm surprised that uh, McGinnis has thrown the ball as much as they are. I think that ball was tipped. Uh, it, yeah. didn't, it didn't sail like his other passes. I, th I think a lineman... So that's the first turnover on McGinnis, but they were able to drive the football. So Midwest City will have the ball at their own 15. They got a ways to go to get the ball back in the end zone. Colston handoff, and nowhere to go. There's Mahmoud. 
That's uh, Dennis Morrison who just, like a wall, would not let Colston go anywhere. Still gained two on that, so it's second and eight. Colston's still going to need to get a hot hand in the yeah. air. We've got to do something. Uh, we can't just grind these out. He's got to have uh, either a big run in play or a long pass. Yeah, or my mood needs to get going. He he was great in the first half, but gets the handoff here, cuts it back inside. There's a face mask. They got it. <laughs> he got hit with yep. three or four yellow flags, so they pretty much saw that one. Sure looked like it the way his head was jerked back. So that will give Midwest City uh, a fresh set of downs. Dell City now 41-0 against Pryor. It's been looking really good to advance. Carl Albert is two, the defending 5A state champs. And Elgin, those are the three undefeated teams in 5A. Elgin has scored, uh, I believe, another touchdown to go up 20-0. McAllister has scored, so we'll see if they can make things interesting against Bishop Kelly. Can the winner of that game will take on the winner of this game. Can Midwest City make it interesting? We're late in the third quarter now, so some of these start happening. Here's LaViola trying to make something happen. He will get tackled at the 40 for a four-yard gain just past the 40, so close to five. And those running plays keeps the top clock ticking, and uh, yeah. I, I love uh, – Leviathan, the way he runs, but uh, we're going to have to get more than four or five at a time. Yeah. You need, to, you need big plays, you need to throw. I can understand why they still run it, though. They've, they have not had any success throwing the ball yet. They've had some success running. Handoff again. Good hard running down. by Leviathan. He gets the first down. So the Bombers are driving now over 30 yards. They Part of that came on a face mask penalty, but they get a first down there on two LaViolet runs. And they are playing with pace. LaViolet again up the middle. And he's met by, I believe again, that's Sean Matkins. But LaViolet gets a short gain. Jalen Woody will come in now. We haven't seen him at running back a lot. Woody was hurt a couple uh, weeks ago. Came back last week. Second and six. The Bombers are going no huddle here. Hand off to Jalen Woody. And Woody gets close to first down. He gets brought down at about the 44-yard line of Bishop McGinnis. Third, looks like less than one. Woody again. First down. Get a first down. Forward progress will give him a first down. The ball will get to the 40-yard line. But, yeah, Tom, you got to think now about maybe taking a shot because of it's, the time. There's two minutes left in the third quarter. we gotta, we got to figure out where 28 points is going to come just to get it in overtime if we're going to get that. And up again, Woody. Woody gets to the second level. He gets another bomber first down. That's what I'm talking about. Well, he's fresh. You're running back. Nathan Bryant will come in to be a lead blocker. Woody with another handoff. He knocked down Jacob Brunson there. That's how hard he was running. And they're going to bring Mahmoud back in. And now McGinnis is going to call a timeout. All right, we'll take a quick break. Minute 34 to go in the uh, third quarter. You're watching Miss City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Mission begins to call the timeout there. Bomber's still looking to run. So they got a tight end in the fullback end. And McGinnis may have gone may have jumped off sides there. That would give Middle City a first down. Save some clock. Yeah. <laughs> well, However their coach feels about uh, how well their team's playing, you can't like that. You call a timeout, then you call, then you get an offsides penalty. And now here we go. Here we go. A Louis Red Zone, Tom. Yay. Louis, we're in your neighborhood. And in case of Midwest City neighborhoods, they're located 6007 Southeast 15th Street. Mahmoud, short gain there. So they took away the run up the middle there, did McGinnis. We'll see if Midwest City tries to attack another spot in that uh, defensive front. Taking some time here. It looks like Colson was a little confused, but he got he has the play now. Mahmoud to his left. Mahmoud gets the handoff, the and they hole. converged on him quickly. Jay, Jace Weeks with a tackle. So now that's what you see. Uh, uh, they're going to be able to do that timeout. They've had two good defensive plays against the run there. Yeah, they stopped their momentum. That's yeah, the they, main reason they did that. With, we got 30 seconds left in this quarter. So they figured something out. We'll see if Bibba City can counter effectively. Third and eight. They're going to run it this time to the outside. The Violet tried to cut it back to the middle, and he will be tackled well short of the first down. For McGinnis, that's uh, Jack Foster who plays a lot on offense for him. Of course, for Midwest City, you have to go for it here, but it's fourth and eight. and Quarter's going to run out. Yep. Yeah, might let it run so you can, yeah, you have to let it run out anyway, but definitely so you can. Um, and that's the end of the, end of the uh, third quarter. Definitely want to take some time here to figure out this is such a big fourth down play. If Midwest City has any chance to make this game interesting. All right, you are watching Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network right into the fourth quarter right now. Red Plains Plumbing has been offering reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This fourth quarter brought to you by Tooney Buys Houses. We buy and renovate homes. We also lease and owner finance homes throughout the state of Oklahoma. Call them at 405-353-9682. Fourth down. Bombers need eight. They fake the handoff. Colson with time. Fires, and it's incomplete. That should have been a pass. I don't know. Lincoln King, the intended receiver, and that's Tom. A situation where all that, uh, you know, having that bad field position just was too much field position to overcome there. Right. 
That's yeah. why you need to get three and outs on defense so you can get them to punt deeper in their own territory. But neither team scored, and that's to McGinnis's advantage here. Now McGinnis might run the ball quite a bit here. I think expect. they'll run every play. Yeah, Aiden Brown with a tackle. That's Fletcher with a handoff for McGinnis. Ball's at the 19, second and seven. And this time, they're going to get him in the backfield for a loss. Fletcher had nowhere to go. Those plays have just been few and far between for Midwest City. And the clock keeps ticking. That's the problem with that. So third and nine for McGinnis. And, yep, they'll take their time to snap it here. To throw, Cochran, and his pass is wide and incomplete. Player was wide open, though. That was a just a bad pass. Yeah. It's a player we haven't seen yet for McGinnis. That's uh, number 21, Hudson Aiken, the intended receiver. But for one of the few times we will see McGinnis punt, and Midwest City can get good field position out of this. And, again, Midwest City has two returners back. This is definitely a switch from what they've normally done. It's not Josiah Johnson. It's instead Lossier LaViolette and Lincoln King. And I think they need to return this. They don't block it. They don't block it. close. Instead, it gets past King, and he just needs to let it go. I mean, it's tough to field that once it hits the ground. So a good punt for Bishop McGinnis. And Midwest City will have their third offensive possession of this half. 10-10 to go. Again, all we can ask for is that the Bombers can make it interesting. It doesn't seem like 28 points is doable, but you can just get that one touchdown and then see what happens from there. Who knows? Woody in the backfield with Colston. Trips to his left. And Woody had nowhere to go. And lose three on that. Yeah, we got uh, two different 77s for McGinnis here. So I want to make sure we get this right. As he's had a good game. Nick Hill is actually the name of the uh, defensive lineman there. And he made a good tackle. Second and long. Second and 12. Colston with a man in motion. Now he's going to throw. Throws it short to Woody. Woody doesn't have really room to go very far. And he gets tackled close to the line of scrimmage there. Number 12, Andrew Harris with the tackle. So Bombers now, they actually lost quite a few of yard, uh, yardage there. And now we're looking at third and way long. Taking too long. So ball's at about the 25-yard line. They have to get to the Midwest City 42. So we're looking at third and about 17. To pass is Colston. Under some pressure, Run. now he's going to keep it. And he's not close to the first down. He gets to the 30. So we're looking at a fourth and about 12. And uh, Bombers will go ahead and punt here. So 
So here's Ariaga's short snap. Gets a high punt off. It will land at about the 40 of McGinnis. Fielded at about the 41. So we're down at 8.04 left. And as McGinnis appears to be on their way to another road victory. And I believe for the sixth straight year, you're going to see the three seed from District 2 go on the road and beat the two seed from District 1 in the first round. And for Midwest City, what's really frustrating is two straight years where they lose their first round playoff game at home. Not what you were hoping for when you go to 5A from 6A. No. And these guys had the talent. They had some size up front. I just thought it was going to be their their year. And mm -hmm. Just got outplayed. Like, runs like that. Big run from McGinnis here as they get the ball inside the 20. That's one of their reserves. That's uh, number 31, Jet Schaefer. I think he's one of their basketball players. So first and 10 at the 18. It's McGinnis bringing in some reserves that didn't play much in the first half. Schaefer again gets stopped at the 15-yard line. Well, Tom, Bombers have a lot to look forward to next year. A lot of juniors that played a lot will be coming back. Well, we got the Jones boys. <laughs> We're led by the Jones boys. <laughs> All three Woody, of them. JoJo. Hopefully they'll have, we'll have Santana Landon back uh, as he has missed most of the year with an injury. The cornerbacks, the wide receivers, the linebackers are going to miss Nathan Bryan for sure. They're going to miss La Sierra Levi. That's the one exception in the defensive backfield. And, of course, they'll miss Kenny Colston. Yeah, had a rough game, but... He's been really good for him this year overall. About a two-yard gain there. I don't want to say a lot about McGinnis and their coaching, but uh, yeah. my studs and quarterback, I would, and this much lead, I don't know if I'd leave him in there with less than seven minutes left in the game. Well, if he just hands the ball off, yeah, that's all he's he, doing. If he gets hit, I'm just telling you. That's a good point, but rarely do, does he get hit if he hands it off. Now, he won't hand it off here, though, so this will be interesting. He's alone in the backfield. Unless they run some type of reverse or jet sweep here. Third down. He's going to throw. He's got plenty of time. Throws in the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Another third down conversion. And another touchdown for Bishop against first of the half for them. And the score is getting uglier for Midwest City. It's 41 to 7 now. Coming on, coming on to kick it's Kilgallen. And the extra point is good. Your score. Bishop McGinnis 42, Midwest City 7. You are watching Midwest City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels. Easy loading flat belt conveyor. Unlimited membership and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. Welcome back to Mississippi Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Here's Red Plains Limited kickoff. When you need a trusted plumber, feel confident choosing Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated since 2005. Call them at 405 769 1922. 
One of the best players for McGinnis has been <laughs> Will Kilgallen. He's got a leg on him. He's kicked numerous touchbacks. The only big exception was when he attempted an onside kick that McGinnis thought they were covered but did not. Let it go. That will be another touchback. All right, Tom. Your scoring recap, recap is brought to you by Valor Physical Therapy in Midwest City. Uh, their therapists are experts in athletic injury management and sports enhancing programs designed to push performance to the next level. Located near Midwest City High School, call 405-648-0826 and visit our website at valorpt.com. Four plays, 42 yards. Uh, it was a 14-yard pass, and I didn't catch a young man's number, but uh, they're up 42-7. to seven. Some of the other seniors we should recognize, Jacob Brunson. Bombers will miss him dearly. And I wish he could have had more uh, playoff success his last three years as a starter. There's Lossier the Violet, another senior. He's going to get a chance to get some yards as his career as a Bomber will be coming to a close here. Got a first down run there. And out to the Violet again. Showing really good patience. Before being brought down by uh, number 49 for Bishop McGinnis. That's Jalen Stewart. More of the Violet. He will be short of the first down there. So a tough injury for Middle City in the uh, earlier in this game was Avant Curry going down. And he's a senior who will be missed. Colston waiting on a play here. And out to the Violet who will be close to a first down. He got the first down. Uh, he's short. Nope. He's not, yep, you're right. Short. We gotta go for it. I mean. Yep. Well, and one more senior will definitely miss will be Nathan Bryant. Nothing to lose here. Yeah. As a fullback and as a defensive lineman, he was making plays this year for him. The Violet with the uh, first down. The drive continues. And of course. Middle City seniors who uh, were hurt, unfortunately, um, their career ends a lot sooner than we hoped for. Darian Rogers and Devin Sissons. But they've definitely been good bombers the last several years. More good running from the Violet. He's, um, he's going to play hard at the very end. Four minutes. Second and one here. Bombers taking their time a bit more on this drive. Colston will keep it, follows his lead blocker, and Colston will get to the 35-yard line. And that's a first down for Midwest City. And do we have a timeout? Coaches were coming out like there was. The players initially went to the sideline. We do not have a timeout. We do have a first and ten. McGinnis with a late sub. Twins to the right for Colston. Handoff against the Violet. Makes one Irish miss. They're swarming him. I well, know it's coming now. He's all heart, but. Yep. So he gets brought down to the 33-yard line, second and eight. It'll be under three minutes when they snap this ball. One more senior we definitely should mention because he's been fun to watch this year, David Ariaga. 
Yes, sir. He should be uh, playing somewhere yes. next year on Saturdays. Let's hope he gets a nice scholarship somewhere. More the Violet showing no signs of uh, needing a rest. So he gets to the 27-yard line. And that will set up a third and short. Glad he's getting all these reps because you know, Jaheim Mahmood and Jalen Woody being seniors. And we're expecting them to have big years next year as the really the, the duo for Midwest City. They, they probably won't. They, they may have another running back they throw in there, but uh, I could see those two getting 50-50 there as far as handoffs go. Here's the Violet. Gets a first down. For Memphis City, it's also good to see a sophomore uh, as center, Dominique Cochran, doing a good job. Wouldn't be surprised if he's a starting center. So you, you kind of have four of the five offensive line spots figured out for Memphis City for next year. Under two and a half to go. More the Violet. It's brought down the 21 yard down, 21 yard line. 2.14 to go. And now Midwest City will call a timeout. And we'll keep it here. So um, I think the challenge, Tom, for these juniors and sophomores that definitely have played this year coming back is how to put yourself in a position to win a playoff game against District 2. Now, District 2 will look very different next year because two of the teams that have been do, winning on the road, or the, the two teams that Middle City has lost to at home, Piedmont and McGinnis will be moving on to 6A2. Now, Middle City will have a shot at Piedmont the next couple of years in non-district play, but you won't be seeing them in the playoffs. Instead, District 2 is probably going to be a little weaker, but they will be uh, moving El Reno and Noble to that district. And if those two teams are a 3-4 and four seed, well, Middle City... Had, had challenging games against them. Yes, they did. There was defensively, no doubt about yeah. That. De defensively, they had a tough time with both El Reno and Noble. Reno's running game and Noble's passing game were tough on the Bombers. And to get a home game, though, Middle City has to be better than Elgin and Dell City next year. And those are two teams they lost to. Now, Dell City will lose a lot of seniors. El Reno, uh, Elgin will lose some. But that will be uh, a challenge as Dell City's moving to District 1 next year. Keeper. Colston to keep it, and Colston will score a touchdown. So Kenny Colston in his last game as a bomber will get into the end zone. And that will make the score 42-13 with two minutes and one second left to go. So one more extra point for David Ariaga, who was great this season for Midwest City. He was a breath of fresh air, and we yeah. needed it for our kicking game. It was hurting. The extra point is good. Yeah, for, for Ariaga, just consider what it was like the previous couple years for Midwest City is kickoffs were an adventure. If <laughs> either they kicked it out of bounds. Least. Any kick. Yeah, if they, they would kick it out of bounds a lot of times and just take the field position hit, which means the other team would get the ball to start at the 35-yard line. Or if they fielded it, they would usually get a good return, and the New City had given up a couple of, of touchdowns. And Ariaga came in and, and stopped all that. And so we'll see if they can find a good kicker. But the, the big thing is, ultimately, how will they replace Kenny Colston? Will it be Lincoln King? And, of course, not all these juniors will be back. Sometimes you've got, you know, really good juniors who will move or sophomores, and then you hope to have new players that move into the district. Yeah, we need to get those boys in the weight room, that's for sure. Yeah, so that will be a big question. But you know what? They'll, they'll have, I'd say, four ex Three starting offensive linemen coming back and one somewhat seasoned offensive lineman coming back. Assuming all the juniors and sophomores that are on this team now return. And you'll have 
a very experienced linebacking core. You know, I could see Marquise Massengale filling in for Nathan Bryan on the defensive line. Oh, for sure. They'll have a lot of experienced players, but again, will they be better enough to make a run in 5A after two straight years being in 5A and having no playoff wins? There's an onside kick, and McGinnis fell on it early. They didn't let it go the full 10, and they were able to retain possession. So we'll see if uh, McGinnis just takes knees here. They decide to go ahead and run it a couple times, but uh, they will move on. Again, for Midwest City, it would be sh a shock of all shocks that they don't make the playoffs next year. In a district that in will include Southeast, Western Heights, Duncan, and Altus, along with Lot MacArthur, Dell City, Elgin. The question is, can they get a good, can they get a home game again, preferably winning the district, and can they be prepared for that playoff game and Especially on the defensive end. They, I mean, they've had good defensive teams the last two years, but their defense did not play well in the, either of these playoff games. Quarterback keeper, and he's going to get a first down for sure. Let's see who that is for Bishop McGinnis. This new quarterback. Ross Jones with a tackle. He'll be a linebacker that 16? looks to return. Mason Jones, a sophomore, is the quarterback now for McGinnis. Anyway, Tom, uh, you'll have to go interview Coach Hall. In a moment, Coach Hall has been, been gracious to uh, agree to interview us after a playoff loss in the past. Uh, but what are your thoughts about the Bombers next year? I'm, ex I'm always excited about it because I've, I've met these young players. These men yep. want it. Uh, I just Today, I just think uh, we fell short in some areas, and, and we hadn't had no dead gum turnovers. Uh, it'd be a lot closer than what it is. That's true, but but we gotta you gotta get somehow, the end zone. I mean, it, it's is it? Do they need to be more physical as well in these games? And I think that's part of it. Yep, and that's and, why I'm talking about getting in the weight room. Yeah, and and again, also it wasn't just that they got beat deep on some third and longs. Stuff that did not happen to them very much again in district play. But then you play a Bishop McGinnis, and they're gonna. Get another road win in the playoffs. We've, we showed a graphic of this. They win on the road in the playoffs. Even when they go down to a three seed, even when they, you know, they, they didn't score a point against Guthrie, did McGinnis. And they have 42 here. And that Guthrie game, I'm pretty sure they hosted Guthrie. That's going to do it. That will be the final play. And that will be the end of the season for the Midwest City Bombers. They come up short to the Bishop McGinnis Irish. Final score, Bishop McGinnis 42, Midwest City 14. Bishop McGinnis will move on to the second round next week. And just tough to see Midwest City for the second straight uh, 5A postseason being won and done. Bishop Kelly, or Bishop Kelly, up by only two touchdowns against McAllister, so we don't want to say it's the Bishop McGinnis, Bishop Kelly matchup yet next week. Uh, looks like Bishop Kelly has some work to do. Also, uh, looks like Carl Albert will or has won against El Reno, 49-21. And congratulations to Elgin. They shut out Piedmont, who had some offensive success in the first half against Carl Albert. It was Elgin who got shut out last year at home in the playoffs to Guthrie. Now they host Piedmont at home in the first round, and they win 20-0. And uh, Dell City will hold on for victory against Pryor. Current score in the fourth quarter is 48-8. So the three undefeated teams... In 5A are also three teams on the Oklahoma Sports Network, so their games next week will be seen. Three of the four games that are on. The one game that will not be seen, unfortunately, will be whoever Bishop McGinnis plays. As we're hoping that would be Midwest City. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then uh, we'll hope to have Coach Hall on. 
You are watching Moose City Bummer Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and ask yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light. You think all of a sudden their insurance company is going to be all neighborly about it? <laughs> insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Welcome back to Middle City Bomber Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're hoping to uh, have Tom Carpenter in a moment talk to Coach Hall. Right now, this is the Patrick Newby post game segment for you. Patrick Newby's Farmers Insurance. The Newby HC is your local Oklahoma Farmers Insurance agency in Middle City. Their HC is family owned and operated and has been serving the public for over 40 years now. Their office is located off of 29th and Air Depot near Tinker Air Force Base. Come by and see us at 560 West Boeing. Drive Suite A, or give give us a call at 405-733-7671. They've done this with us for two years. We really appreciate Patrick Newby's support. All right, let's go ahead and get Tom ready to go. He has Coach Hall with him. And Tom? Okay, Coach. Tough one. Oh, again, you know, we can't be our worst enemy. You know, um, we had a prime opportunity to take that first drive and go down and score. You know, we're fourth and one, and, you know, we've got to figure out some things. They Fourth down, they cut us every time. You know, so we got cut last week, and we are expecting it some, but when they didn't, 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 then we had to play catch up. You know, and it's a matter of doing your job. You know, again, you know, it stabs you in the heart when you got a fourth and 29, and you give up a touchdown pass. And the guy's behind us, and he's like, why is he behind us? I mean, it's fourth and 29. They're, I mean, the only thing they can do is throw a pass. So, you know, like I told the young man, I'm proud of, of what they did for me this year. Um, and just go back and look at the film and be honest with yourself, plus and minus. Plus and minus, did you do your job like you said you would going into this game? And if yeah. you did, then I'm proud of you. If you didn't and you freelance, then I'm not that proud. Because, I mean, we threw, I mean, we had him at third and some things, and we gave up two touchdowns on third and forever. That's just and, not. Yeah, there was there's some guys that did get open. I thought, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> Somebody... well, it shouldn't have been. It's third forever. I mean, first we started out in man, thinking, okay, we realized we weren't keeping our eyes on a guy, so we went quarters, you know? So now you got a quarter of the zone. Don't let anybody behind you play up, rally up. Still, 
So, I mean, like I said, can't play for him. Um, I feel so, I feel sorry for my seniors that, that everybody didn't bring it because, you know, a guy like uh, LaViolet brought it tonight. Oh, he brought Brunson it. Brunson brought it tonight. You know, oh. those seniors brought it. I mean, you know, and those guys did. And we had some underclassmen also do their job. But, you know, I hate it for them that it didn't end like we expected and we didn't do what we needed to do to be to move on to next week. And we've got to figure out a way to fix it. Mm. Well, now there's next year. And one thing I was looking at for next year, uh, get those guys in the weight room. Yeah, well, we were there every day. You know, it was just, you know, it was just like anything else. Like we say, film don't lie and weight room don't lie. So when we max out, if you're a guy that's hitting it, you're going to increase it. If you're not, and you're max the same, then, then you're, you're not. You're over there. We can't count everybody's rep. We got to trust that you're going to do what's what's put out there to do. So yeah, we're going to be in the weight room. We're going to try to increase our 225 rep. We're going to do a lot better job. We got to figure out how to get out of the first freaking round of the playoffs. You know, I, I uh, was glad to see the Jones boys out here. All three Jones boys were out here yes. suited up. I thought that was awesome. I played with my brother, and that was one of the best feelings I had, to be able to play with my brother. And I know the three of them suited up at the same time. Uh, they should be proud, and they should be the ones leading them next year. Yeah, I mean, we got, Get them three, in the weight room. We got three out of five coming back on the old line. It's just got to figure out, you know, we just got to, you know, can't have turnovers. You know, we had two turnovers, and they turned into touchdowns in the first half when we had a chance to get it down. I mean, it's it's a it's a 21 to seven game or when it's third and forever. We're thinking we're gonna make it 14, 21, and we get up a, a 60 yard pass. So things like that can't happen, and uh, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what how to get better. So all right, coach. Appreciate you guys covering it, and I don't know what to say. I'm, uh, I'm disappointed. Pretty That's sure we'll be here next year, and uh, I'm just looking for you know better results. We can do what we can do. That's it. We got to do better. All right. Got to do better. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Appreciate you coming out. Love you, buddy. Bet. Love you too. Take care of yourself, Tom. All right. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Coach Hall. All right. So that will do it for us for Memphis State Bomber football. Our fifth year of putting it on the air. We have a lot of fun doing it. Um, again, there's a lot to look forward to for next year. But yeah, they got to figure some things out. How to. Um, and you're at first round of the playoff game. You know, I could see him taking on, hopefully not Carl Albert. Maybe Guthrie. That would be a tough one. El Reno or Noble. Those would probably be the top four teams in District 2 next year. 5A District 2. Those, and that's who Middle City would play. If you're in District 1, you're going to play a District 2 team in the first round. And, hey, El Reno had some success on this field earlier this season running the ball. Noble had success passing the ball. So it's never going to be easy. You're going to play a, a, a team with a good offense probably in the first round of the playoffs, and and also the offense has to play better here as well. But turnovers could be the simple explanation for that, but the defense, unfortunately, didn't was not able to get the job done. One last thing in 5A to tell you about for other playoffs. Uh, Collinsville and Coweta. Barn burner right now. That game is tied at 20. But the other games look to be uh, pretty much over. And including uh, Bishop Kelly. So we will see the uh, Bishop Kelly, Bishop McGinnis rematch. They played earlier this year at Bishop Kelly, and that, that game was won by Bishop Kelly. So be sure to tune in next week to um, see Elgin in action, Carl Albert in action, and Dell City. They'll be taking on Guthrie. That, again, should be a hell of a game. I want to right now thank all of our sponsors. Um, we need sponsors to put this product on the air. And uh, we got them. Uh, some of them came a little late, but we're, we're really glad we had them um, at all. Led by the Countdown to Kickoff sponsor, Dusty, Dusty's Mobile Mechanic Service. Um, Keys to the Game sponsor. That was that one came late, but I look forward to uh, hoping having some type of positive, long relationship with that sponsor. That's the East Side Church of Christ. Intertwined Hearts Ministry. Coin Toss sponsor. We really appreciate them. We did not have a starting lineup sponsor, so uh, if you're listening, and we would love to have a starting lineup sponsor next year. So uh, they'll find a way to contact us. Triple Elite, they've been with us for several years now. They're an instant replay sponsor, and we appreciate them a great deal. Our kickoff sponsor Red, is uh, Red Plains Plumbing, and they're not only are they the, our kickoff sponsor, they do kickoffs as well for Dell City and Carl Albert, and... They allow us to run their commercials, which means they pay us a good amount of money for that. And anyone who um, um, allows us to run their commercials is uh, really helping us out a lot. And that describes Red Plains Plumbing. Scoring recap, Valera Physical Therapy, uh, located really close to Middle City High School. We really appreciate Eric Browning for helping support Middle City Bomber Football and the Oklahoma Sports Network. He's their uh, um, 
their manager there. Uh, Louis, our Red Zone sponsor, Louis has done a lot of stuff the last three years for Oklahoma Sports Network. They're located in Midwest City. They have catered for us many times, and uh, that's just really kind of them to do. They're, they're, they're really good at being involved in the community. Uh, so we really appreciate Louis in Midwest City. La Herencia Grill. Uh, they came on board last year. They also did Middell basketball and Middell baseball, and we really appreciate La Herencia Grill. Now, uh, again, Patrick Newby, we'll mention the uh, post-game sponsor again. Um, when it comes to live advertising, read, well, real quick, Patrick Newby's been with us two years in a row as the post-game sponsor. We uh, really appreciate them helping us out. So please, look, all these places I've mentioned, please go, uh, if you can, give them your business. Um including uh, if you need an insurance agent. So we appreciate Patrick Newby very much. And the quarter sponsors, Vision Care Direct of Oklahoma. Came in a few games in the season, but um, uh, we really appreciate their support. Rose State College, who, again, has been doing live advertising with us. They were doing commercials before, but they were doing live advertising with us last year for many sports, and then this year live advertising for football and, our, and letting us run their commercials. We really appreciate Rose State College. Tooney Buys Houses, who also does stuff with Carl Albert, and they uh, will do stuff for basketball this year. So we really appreciate Tooney Buys Houses for being one of our sponsors. And I want to mention uh, Buffalo Wild Wings last because uh, we ate there today, had a great time. Not only are they a quarter sponsor, they also help sponsor Dell City, Carl Albert, and they host the mid Dell Sports Report every Wednesday. We're going to keep doing that even though Middle City's out. We're going to keep having that until all mid Dell schools are done with their football season. And we have a girls' basketball preview coming up this week as well. And we really believe that uh, we will be doing something next semester as well. And so Buffalo Wild Wings makes that happen. We appreciate them greatly. And then... Finally, some um, businesses that run their commercials with us. Um, Tommy's Car Wash uh, in Midwest City, 15th Street. They were one of the first, uh, I think they were our first commercial other than Cameron that we got to run. And so uh, they're, they're local, of course. So please give Tommy's Car Wash uh, your business. Um, we also want to thank um, couple of other sponsors there if you could pull up the uh, commercial tab I'm talking to my producer Matt uh, Vesta really appreciate them they're with us uh, now two years in a row and then the um, law firm of Ela and cannot see the last name Gooney or something like that apologize for not getting that name right but they came on a couple weeks in the season and we love running their commercial they have a a, a great commercial uh, so Again, please give these places your business if you have the opportunity. I want to thank uh, this year our interns, Alicia Wooten, who can't be with us the whole time because she's in band, but she does try to come and, and see us and help us out and do even some camera work for us, and she likes to help out with the Buffalo Wild Wings Coaches Show. And uh, she's only a sophomore, so look forward to having, you know, using hers next year in some way if uh, possible. Uh, Sarai Rawls, another intern who came in uh, after a couple games this season and got to produce um, and did a good job of it. And she's only a freshman, and we look forward to uh, doing some more things. Help, hopefully she will help can help us out in the years to come. Uh, Bernie Wren, another intern who spots for me a lot. And um, we love his enthusiasm. And he's made this year uh, broadcasting games a lot of fun. Amaya Robinson, our camera operator, um, new to the job, but she learned. Uh, she's a senior. We'll miss having her run camera for football. Maybe she can do some other sports. Also, we're going to miss Matthew Batista. His one year producing football, he was fantastic, as good as, as any producers we've had. Um, and he catches stuff that I don't see, and that's what you want in a producer, someone who can do that, because I'll miss stuff. And, and, I, and I can't always point them out, Jordan. No, you cannot, Tom. Is <laughs> glad to have you back in the booth. And, Tom, we've completed your number five. So, again, it's a lot of fun. Disappointing. It can't go longer. I'm telling you, yeah. I don't know what the deal is. The, we need to get uh, at least to that second round and get going. That's right. And some things to look forward to for Midwest City. Um, our first Midwest City basketball game on the Oklahoma Sports Network will be when they host Dell City uh, December 15th. And uh, girls, 
look really strong in 5A. They can make a run for the state title. And the boys got a shot in the arm when uh, early this week enrolling at Tamil City High School is the number one junior in the state for basketball, Carl Sheon Young. He's committed to Oklahoma State. Um, still maybe an, an eligibility thing to work out. Just you're never sure because he came from a prep school in West Virginia. So, um, But he's practicing with them, and so if it, it works out that he can play, um, that will make Midwest City, you know, it, it, the boys' basketball team had a disappointing year last year. They can really – Rebound is there now in 5A. That will help. I think there's a definitely a big difference in 5A for basketball than 6A. Uh, football, not as much when you go from 6A2 to 5A. All right, Tom. And also, one more thing. We um, hope to do a little bit of wrestling, and then uh, we're actually hoping that Middle City Baseball is a strong year, so hopefully you can come out for some of those games and we can get them on the network. I'm going to try. I, uh, I know you got umpire duty uh, around that time. I, well, I also agreed to do some college softball. They have some of the smaller schools, class – or the D3 type schools that uh, may be doing some softball for them in the spring, along with my baseball. So, I, I, yeah, I really want to do that because, like, doing the state championship, yep. 5A state championship, that was awesome. Yeah, that's when Carl Albert played Bishop Kelly. But uh, we're going to really try hard. New is going back to the West in baseball. We're going to really try hard to get uh, their regional in baseball on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We had not been able to do that because they went east the last two years. So, We'll try to do both Carl Albert and Midwest City for baseball to re get their regionals on the network as best we can. That's, uh, that's a ways off. That's early May, so uh, about six months from now. But anyway, just some things to look forward to and maybe more things to look forward to. But we're going to sign off for now as we complete season no number five of Midwest City Bomber football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Hold on. Where sports is our middle name. Goodbye, everyone. See you. Thanks for watching this presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network.